Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if neglected Naruto removes Anko's curse seal. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by the Red Abyss and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Prologue. Challenge to God Part 1. It was a little past afternoon in the village Kanahagakur. It's a peaceful village because its shinobis were devoted to protect it from any source of danger, be it small or large. They would do anything or go any length to make sure that Kanoha stays safe. They would do anything to make it more, more strong, even if they have to degrade themselves they wouldn't care because it will make sure that Kanoha is strong and safe. Every citizen is happy, but in these civilians there's a boy who is not a bit peaceful and happy like other people's because his everyday life is as living in hell. Everyday people of Kanoha will beat him, torture him, and sometimes the vicious attacks of the villagers drove him to death. But he never died from these attacks because he was the Jinchuriki of nine-tailed fox or Kaiubi no Kitsune. Everyone minus latest generation knows this fact, that's why they called him different names as demon, demon brat, monster etc. And always kept a distance from him because they were afraid that the beast sealed in the boy will kill them, and some of them actually believed that he was the Kaiubi incarnate. His name was Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto always wondered why they always call him different names and why they always stand away from him and why parents never let their children play with him. But whenever incident like happened he never retaliated. He was even unable to save himself. And that is because he was only four years old. The Bijuu always healed him completely without leaving any sign of beating sessions. He was alone in that god-forsaken hellhole called Kanoha. But sometimes the Hokage, leader of the village, Saratobi Hirazan, used to visit him and sometimes offered him some raiment treats. These were the only normal or happy moments for him. But Hokage couldn't stay with him all time and right now at the moment he was being chased by a mob of angry villagers. It was evening time, maybe 5 or 6 pm. Naruto was running as fast as his little legs could help him. But still it was surprising for a little kid to run so fast and so long that his chasers was having problem in catching him. Naruto while being chased was thinking only one thing, how to escape from the angry looking villagers. But he couldn't help to wonder what he did to make the villagers so mad at him that if stopped for a second then the next moment his head would be missing from his body. So he turned his head slightly to his left and asked in a fearful voice, why are you doing this? I didn't do anything to you. Please let me go. He shut his eyes momentarily in hoping to clear his vision while running. One of the villager barked in anger you demon, you killed my brother. Another one yelled demon you killed my daughter. Some other also yelled their pains. Naruto heard their reasons, same reasons every time. He was beyond frustration. Naruto was pondering in his mind and forgot to take turn when the street finished and he ended in a dead end. Where will you escape now, bastard? I am going to kill you now. Yeah, I can avenge my family now. Statements like these could be heard from the crowd of villagers. The one in front, who was leading or looking like the leader of the group came forward and moved to Naruto who was sticking to the wall behind him. The leader came face to face with Naruto and grabbed his jaw in his callous hands. He then threw him to the wall. Naruto cried in unbearable pain from the hit his body took against the wall. He started to get up but as he got up one villager kicked him hard on the face. Naruto couldn't take the force of the hit and again hit the wall. Blood started to leak from his head. One villager grasped his collar and lifted him in the air. And bring his face closer to Naruto's. After examining that this was not enough and comparing the pain he caused others, maybe killing him would be enough, and he threw him again to the wall. Naruto, now was on the door of unconsciousness. He was lying on the concrete ground helpless, crying silent tears of pain and agony, and bloody and bruised. He just wanted it to end. He wanted to be free from every day's cycle of unbearable pain. The sun had already set behind the horizons. The bright orange hue dusted the sky. Was there no one who cared for him, was there no one who could save him, tell him that everything will be alright. Yeah, Hokage Jiji, but where is he now when he needed him most? He was thinking along these lines when the leader of the assailant group moved towards the bloodied body of Naruto. The wind blew from nowhere towards Naruto and caressed Naruto's hair and face, he felt like someone hugged him. He felt a little ounce of warmth for a moment. And it gave him the comfort. He closed his eyes awaiting his death. But the same wind sent shivers down the villager's spine. So they didn't want to waste any more time. My fellow villagers, today, we are going to get rid of the demon who has haunted our lives. The group of villagers cheers in response. The leader took a one foot long knife which was looking very sharp at the cutting edge. He kneeled down near the form of Naruto and lifted his hand which was holding the knife holding upwards and brought it down to Naruto's chest. But as it was about to pierce the boy's chest, the leader felt something hit him in the head very hard. The hit had so much force that it sent the leader flying towards the group of villagers. 
and hit some of them who were in the way and took them with him to the wall at the end of the alley and other side of the road. And fall on consciousness. Everyone who was watching was flabbergasted. They couldn't comprehend what happened. It just took two or three seconds. After several minutes when they got their bearing they turned towards the newcomer. There stood a girl not more than 10 years old, with violet hairs settled behind her head in a multiple-edged shuriken bun. She was wearing a sleeveless fishnet mesh shirt and dark shorts. And was wearing ninja sandals. She was holding Naruto in her arms like a bride. She wore angry mixed with some sadisticness expression on her face. She yelled like an angry beast to them. What the hell are you idiots doing to a kid? Have you degraded so much low that you didn't think what you are doing? She continued. Have you no shame doing these things to a little child? Who the hell are you bitch? Don't interrupt us. Otherwise you two will die like him. All the lecture and positive words she was about to say stayed in her throat on the remark bitch. And smirked sadistically as much as she could as a 10 years old brat. You know, I was about to let this incident slide from me, but I think nobody taught to anything good and now I will have to do that. She didn't even put Naruto down and rushed towards the remaining members of the group. And before they could know what was happening, they were all eyeing in their own little pool of blood and pile of bodies. She chad and bring her attention towards the form in her hands. She took him to her apartment after some thinking and lay him on the mattress and tried to make him conscious again. Naruto on his part didn't know what was happening around him. He just lay there in her arms, almost unconscious. So he just waited for his body to get better a little. After some minutes of arrival of newcomer, Naruto felt like his was being called by someone. He opened his eyes slightly and saw something violet. He squinted his eyes to see clearly. He saw a beautiful girl, despite being only four years old, he knew what a beautiful word was. He opened his eyes completely and saw her sitting near his feet. Oh, you are alive, I thought I saved you for nothing. She said to him in a teasing voice. What, I am not going to die so easily, I have to be hookage before I die. He yelled to her. You were dead if I was late for a moment. She replied calmly. He was about to yell again when he realized she was right. And stayed silent. So care to tell me what was all that ruckus about? Why were they wanted to kill you? I don't think you would have done anything with that little body. She asked him. Naruto became sad because he himself didn't know. I don't know. He said simply. What, they were about to kill you and you don't know why? She responded. He remained silent. She felt a little irritated but was able to hide it. Suddenly their stomachs growled and broke the silence. Do you want to eat something? She asked. His stomach growled again in response. She sighed and went to prepare dinner. After half an hour both of them were sitting across each other eating. When they were finished she said. So, you should go to your home now, it's late. When he heard her, his face lost all its little shine it had. Oh, says Ori. Two will have to go now, I guess. Thank you for all you did for me. He said stuttering and laughed sheepishly. He did not want to go, he wanted to stay with her, and her place gave him warmth in the chilly night. And where would he from here? Orphanage owner has already kicked him out. And she was the second person who was nice to him, and she also saved him from the villagers. He slowly turned and started to walk towards the door. As he turned his head away from her to go, she caught the sight of a tear slid down from the corner of his eye. Was he crying, but why? She whispered to herself and pondered a little more on it, then it all came crashing down to her. He was an orphan an orphan, like her. And her body moved automatically, her voice came out on its own. Hey she said in a slight louder tone. Naruto's hand was on the doorknob when he heard her. He stayed like that for a moment to compose him and turn towards her. Yeah he asked in a hoarse voice. Ummi forgot to ask your name. So what is it? She asked a little embarrassed on herself that she didn't ask him sooner. Naruto Uzumaki. He answered. Um so Naruto if you would like you can stay the night. You can sleep on the couch. She said. Naruto hearing her teared up in joy and hugged her torso tightly and whispered thank you again and again. Anko felt a little embarrassed from hug because it's her first time any boy hugged her, even if he was a little boy. The moment continued for almost a minute. Then Anko tried to broke the hug, but when she did, he was already asleep leaning against her. She sighed. She sat down where she was standing and brought her hands to his blonde hair and caressed them, her fingers caressing the scalp of his head laying in her lap. He purred in the comfort he got from her. Anko was a little surprised by herself. She never did something like this, bringing some stranger to her apartment and offering food and spending the night. She didn't know herself. She just felt like she must do it. He needed her in that moment and only she could provide him that comfort. She stared at his face, on his whisker marks, he looked like a mystery. She felt like she knew him for a long time, but she just met him a few hours ago. Maybe it was the pain and loneliness in his eyes that felt familiar to her, like her own. She glanced at his face again and continued her thinking. 
she was receiving some kind of warmth from him like he was from her, and when she realized that her face dusted a hue of pink. What the hell, he is just a kid. What am I thinking? But she felt happy, the kind of emotion she didn't felt for how long she didn't know herself. She liked the feeling of happiness and warmth he was radiating, she could get addicted to this, and so she accepted it with open arms. And closed her eyes and lost in new dreams which she would see first time. The morning came, everybody in Kanoha were starting to go their businesses. But apartment which was on the edge of Kanoha's residential area, were two people sleeping on the couch. Their limbs were entangled. They were sleeping like it was their first time they got any sleep. It was a little cold in the morning, but they were sleeping without a blanket, but they were looking like much comfortable. A smile was adorned on their faces. The warmth they were radiating was enough for them to stay warm in the cold. As the time passed the female opened her eyes slowly. She felt refreshed like never before. As she turned her head she the blonde hair. Then she remembered all that happened last night. She was a little embarrassed on their situation. She was laying on her back, Naruto was laying to her side, his right hand hugging her torso and left hand was under his head, face towards her. His right leg on Anko's right leg and her left leg was on his right leg. His head slightly leaning against her right shoulder. And her right hand under his head and left hand on his right which was on her torso. Her face became red like tomato when she observed her predicament. She tried to regain her composer. After a moment when she calmed down she untangled their limbs and lay beside him. Their bodies touching so that the warmth couldn't lose. She stared at him and smiled. Why am I feeling so happy and giddy? It's like this boy is emitting the happiness itself. I never felt like this before. Well but we can't stay like this forever. We have to get up. Naruto Naruto wake up it's time to come to living world she tried to woke him up. Naruto was so comfortable that he forgot where he was. Where am I? I remember being kicked out from orphanage and he thought and remembered. His eyes flew open and saw a pair of light blue pupil-less eyes staring at him. So, how was your sleep she asked. He panicked when he saw his body touching hers. Bri I'm sorry. I didn't mean to touch you he said a little fearful and started to move away from her. She seemed a little confused on his apology and panic state. When she felt him move away, she tightened her hold on him and said in a soft voice she didn't know she has. Naruto, don't need to feel afraid. I am not going to hit you. She tightened her hold more and Naruto nodded. Naruto, I will ask you some questions and you will give me answers honestly, okay she asked him. He nodded. You have been kicked out from orphanage and you don't have anywhere to go, right she questioned him. Yes he said. And would you like to stay with me if I ask you to she questioned again. Yes he said again. We will have to bring your belongings here from orphanage she said. She will not let me enter. Then we will have to do something about it she said. I can ask Hokage Jiji. Are you sure she said. Yeah he said with confidence. Okay then, let's have something to eat and go to Hokage-sama. But you will convince him she said pointing a finger at him. After having breakfast they went to Hokage. When they were walking, most of the villagers eyes on them. Banko seeing Naruto's uneasiness, tried to sway his mind. You didn't tell me, how was your sleep? Oh, it was the best sleep I ever had he told her. And why she asked him. I don't know. Maybe because I was with you and maybe because I felt he stopped moving and hung his head down. You felt safe Anko finished his line. She knelt down to his eye level and put her hands on both of his cheeks and caressed his whiskers with her thumbs. Naruto, from now on you don't need to fear anyone. I will protect you until I can, understood she said to him. He nodded and when he lifted his head the tears were flowing freely. It was first time he was crying in happiness. He hugged her tightly and wrapped his small arms around her neck. She too wrapped her arms around his small figure and hugged him to her body tightly. She lifted his figure to her bosom and put her right hand under his butt and carried him to Hokage Tower. When they met Hokage, they told them everything that happened. And what both of them wanted. Saratobi, when listened them he sighed in frustration. He was annoyed with villagers and Naruto's situation, concerning them. So he, without any second gave his permission. Maybe it will keep villagers away from him a little. And he will be able to taste the peace a little more. Now they were sitting across each other. Hokage had said to them that he will send someone to bring his belongings. They talked about rules for living management. Naruto will help her in daily routine work so she can go to academy worry less. Everything was okay except sleeping arrangement. And after a little argument with herself she came to a decision. Naruto, you will sleep with me on my bed, understood she asked hastily to avoid embarrassment and wait for his answer. She was surprised with her own words. Naruto wide-eyed, just shook his head. When everything was arranged, they started to talk and hours passed. Now it was their everyday routine. Talking, after Anko came home from academy. She used to tell him how her day passed, and he told her how his day passed. They played ninja together every day. Anko told him some things about ninjas. 
They cooked together and in the end they slept together. These days were like heavens for them. They were so happy that Anko's behavior changed from violent to calm and cool in the academy. And now Anko knew why villagers said those names to him and tried to kill him. Okija told her about Kaiubi because it was the most important truth about Naruto and it was necessary for her to know about Kaiubi because she was his guardian. And when she knew about Kaiubi, she accepted it because she was an open-minded girl, her thinking was different. It was all good until one day Anko invited her friend Kuranai to her apartment. While they were talking in the living room, Naruto was sleeping in their bedroom, room. So Anko, where do you go on Saturday and Sunday? You don't come to hang out and not even for practice. Did I not tell you that I stay at home on my weekends? Kuranai sighed. She knew that she stayed at home, but why? Anko I know that, but why do you stay at home? I don't think you have much housework to do. Oh well I think I forgot to tell you, I spend the weekends with Naruto. He lives with me. He is very nice person if you get to know him. Wawadi lives with you, but you never told me that you are in live in with your boyfriend. Kuranai stuttered. Wawad are you talking about? Are you an idiot? He is not my boyfriend. We just live together. And he is a kid, much younger than me. Think before you open your large mouth Kuranai Anko said. Now in no way she was going to tell her that they were sleeping together. Sorry. So where is this Naruto? I haven't seen him whole time I am here Kuranai asked. I'll let me get him for you. Wait here. Anko went to the room and after a little struggle was successful in waking up Naruto. Anko-chan why did you wake me? I was having so good dream about us both. He said sleepily and tried to go to sleep again. Anko blushed when she heard him. It was like daily normal things for them teasing each other. But it wasn't time for that. She held the sheet and yanked it away from his hold. Naruto, my friend Kuranai is here and she want to meet you. But I don't like to meet people, you know that. I know, that's why I am asking you to meet her. She is a very nice person. You will not be disappointed, I swear. After a little more persuading him, he admitted his defeat and went outside with Anko. Kuranai was waiting for them to come out. When she heard sound of their feet she turned her head towards them and said. Hey Ank. Her voice stuck in her throat when she saw him, the demon brat. Was her friend living with the demon? Has she gone crazy? No, she will have to save her friend. She will kill the demon and free her friend and everyone from its curse. Thinking along these lines she ran towards him and punched him hard in the gut. You demon, I will kill you and free Anko and everyone from your fear and curse she raged. Anko couldn't comprehend the situation faster and was unable to act fast. Naruto went flying and hit the wall behind and make a large dent on it. He coughed up some blood and fell down and clutched his stomach in pain. Kurinai ran to the lying form of Naruto and tried to stomp on his head, but suddenly she felt herself flown away from Naruto. This time Anko made it in time. What the hell are you doing, Kurinai? Why the hell would you hit him? Anko said furiously. Anko, you are living with a demon, I didn't know you are so idiot to live with a demon, retorted Kurinai. Anko listening her best friend's words about Naruto, just couldn't stop herself from saying the upcoming words. I don't care what people think about him, and now I don't care what you think about him. And if you have even a little common sense then you should have known that Kaiubi is sealed in him, he is not the Kaiubi dammit. And if you can't understand these things then I can't do anything for you. And if you can't respect the peoples I love then you don't have any right to call yourself my best friend. He is the most important person to me now. You with all the villagers can go to hell, Anko roared and turned towards Naruto's fallen form. Kurinai stood still and contemplated the words Anko just said. Kurinai couldn't comprehend that her best friend will go so far for the demon brat that she could break her friendship with her. She understood what Anko said about the boy, but to go that far. Anko IMS Kurinai tried to say, but Anko cut her. Kurinai, I can't forgive you for what you did to Naruto. And if you want to be my friend then you will have to accept Naruto, but if you want to stay as ignorant brat as you are then forget about our friendship you can go now. Anko finished her conversation. Kurinai just stood there blankly. Her best friend just broke their friendship and for who, that demon of a child. She will deal with Anko later. And quietly left the apartment. Naruto was groaning in pain, his hands were clutching his stomach. Naruto are you okay, it's alright, don't worry, let me see it, Anko said worriedly and remove his hands away from his stomach and pull the white t-shirt upward to examine the spot. The spot where he has been hit was sore and blackish blue. Just looking on it made Anko's eyes water. She picked him up and lay him on the bed. She knew a little healing due to her extra classes on healing and academy. It was not an academy course, but she found it interesting and beneficial, so she asked for it and took extra classes. Naruto it's going to hurt a little, I am going to heal it, okay Anko said wiping her tears that were threatening to fall. Naruto nodded his head, face staining with tears of unbearable pain. Anko brought her hands above the affected area and her hands glowed green. 
After several minutes she finished it with wiping the sweat from her forehead. Dorito felt better now. His eyes started to close in exhaustion. He lifted his head from pillow and put it in Anko's lap and while lying down wrapped his arms around her waist. Anko sighed in relief and put one hand on his head and other ran through his golden locks. A sad expression on her face. Naruto, I am Sazori. She chalked on her sob. Naruto buried his head in her torso more tightly and thought for a minute and then said. Anko-chan don't worry about anything. I am not angry with you even a bit. I am quite happy to see that you care so much for me that you would fight to your best friend for me, in spite of knowing her longer than me. I Anko cut him off. But it was me who forced you to meet her even when you don't want it to Anko cried, she removed her hands from his head and placed them on her face to hide it and cry. Naruto hearing her broke the embrace he was in and sat down on his knees facing her. He watched her for several seconds. Then he lifted his small hands to remove her hands from her face. Her head was down. He put her right hand under her chin and lifted her head. When he saw her face he forgot all his own pain. He didn't want her to look like this. She should be her usual self like cheery, calm, cool and strong, and when needed complete opposite of her usual self. He didn't like that look on her face. So he cupped her face in his little hands and using one hand wiped her tears and said. Banko chan I don't like it when you cry he said and pouted when she chuckled. Banko smiled with affection and Naruto grinned his toothy grin in response. Banko spread her arms outward and motioned for a hug. He wrapped his little arms around her neck and buried his face in her neck. Banko sighed in contentment. Just a hug from Naruto lightened her mood up. She rubbed his back and he purred. Naruto then said something that she didn't expect from him. Anko chan when I will get big, I will become a strongest ninja in the world and become Hokage. Then everyone one will recognize me. And you know how much I love you, you are the most precious person to me. I will do anything for you. And when I will become a ninja, I will protect you and love you so much he said, while motioning his hands behind her back while in the embrace. Anko just melted from his words. Despite being older she liked his pampering to her. And even if he was a little child, she liked his boasting. Did he even know what he is saying? But still she liked every word of it. She felt Naruto saying something again. Anko chan can you promise me something he said a little nervously. Anko caught his nervousness and said before he got more nervous. Yeah, what is it? You can say anything to me. So what is it Anko said. You are the only one in my life I love, and if you la left me then Naruto couldn't continue. Anko understood immediately what was he talking about. So without having second thought she said to him before he could have second thoughts. Naruto, I love you as much as you love me, and I think I love you more than you love me, she said in a teasing voice. Naruto murmured something like not fair in response. And you are a very precious person to me too. So you don't need to worry about me leaving you. I promise I will not leave you ever. She said erasing all his worries. He whispered his thank you and fall asleep in her arms. When she felt his lights out, she lay him down on the bed with her, hugging him to her chest she too fall asleep. Now one year passed since that incident with Kurenai. That incident changed their life completely because it brought them closer than they were before. They both became more close to each other. They now shared a strong bond of love, trust, protectiveness, somewhat possessiveness and devotion to each other. Well Naruto being a child was oblivious to these kinds of things that he had for her. But Anko knew about all that, but she ignored its meanings and effects because she was not lonely now. She has someone to greet her in mourning and to welcome home when she returned from academy, she has someone to take care and it was a good feeling to be cared by someone. So in her happiness she didn't think much about it. Anko was now 12 years old and in her third and last year's completion of academy. Her appearance somewhat same with little noticeable changes. Her height increased to 4'9". Her body fitting her height with toned stomach showing faint six-pack muscle linings, C-cup breasts, more beautiful defined face and legs. She was a total beautiful girl, every teenage boy's dream girl. She wore a top which came to her thighs same size as her mesh suit, just without net. And a blue skirt with knee-length boots. She has an aura of power, self-confidence, calm and cool, wearing a sadistic grin and a carefree attitude. Some boys tried to hit on her, but after first word they found themselves at the edge of the village in a heap of blood and stuck in wall. So they kept their distance with her. And Naruto was still used to stay at home or their apartment. He was six-year-old now. He was also changed from his previous appearance when he first met Anko. He was now 3-5 of height. He was now a healthy boy because Anko specifically kept Naruto's health in check. He looked cute and handsome according to Anko's teasing. Naruto always blushed and pouted whenever she called him that. Now he did most of housework because Anko was busy with academy and training. She started to train more when Naruto started to live with her. Because both of their safety was now dependent on Anko. She placed some traps in her apartment so that while she would be out no one could harm Naruto. 
Naruto started to go out with Anko on walking and park and training ground where Anko trained and Naruto watched. Naruto also started to work out with Anko's instructions and for future references. Anko just trained him physically cause he wasn't ready for chakra training. So he was now strong enough among the children of his age. But his wish to make friends just blocked his strength show to others. He always got beaten down intentionally and hoped to make a friend but failed every time which in result made him sadder. But after reaching home and a hug from Anko always lightened his mood. But the villagers' attitude didn't change towards him. But Anko by his side he didn't care. So their life was going on like that. Two years have passed. It was the time of Anko's graduation test. Anko woke up with Naruto in her arms, it was every day's routine for them to sleep in each other's arms. It was not in any way perverseness from their part. It was just because they felt comfortable and safety in each other's arms. Both left the bed and after their daily routine they had their breakfast. Anko left for the academy, but when she reached the door she turned towards Naruto and said. Naruto, I have my graduation exam for Genin today. And it's obvious that I will pass, so we will go out today for celebration she said cheerfully. Naruto when heard her jumped on his seat and yelled happily, but suddenly he stopped and said. How are you so sure that you will pass he said a little doubtfully. Anko smirked sadistically, which always sent shivers to his body. Do you have any doubt in my skills and power? Hashi brought her face closer to Naruto's who was sweating bullets now. When she saw his face expressions her smirk widened. Sorry, I never had any doubt in your ability, Anko-chan he said fearfully. Anko's face softened. She embraced him for a second to put him on ease. Naruto relaxed in the hug. She broke the hug and smiled to him. He smiled in return already forgetting the moment before. Be ready, when I will return, we will have a blast. Okay she said softly and cheerfully. Naruto nodded and then Anko left. Naruto and Anko were lying in living room on the couch. Anko was lying on her back and Naruto on top of her. His hands around her waist and head on her breasts. Anko's one hand on his back and other in his hair, running through them. Whole living room was filled with bowls of ramen and boxes of dangos and bottle of soft drinks. They had one hell of a time. She invited some of her friends like Aruka, Yugao, Kurinai, Kurinai settled her friendship, but it wasn't like before. They laughed, danced, ate, was one hell of a night for all of them. Hey brat, did you enjoy the party Anko asked Naruto while caressing his blonde locks. Yeah it was the best he purred in her chest. She felt vibrations in her chest from Naruto's voice. A foreign feeling arose in her stomach. She felt a little hot. But she ignored it after a moment. Naruto then lifted his head and now rested his chin on her chest and stared in her eyes. Anko felt a little uncomfortable by the look in his eyes and then he asked something he had asked one year ago but in a different way and that sent shivers to her spine. Anko-chan, I know you have promised to me this once before but can you say this again, that that you won't leave me in any condition. I am feeling a little uneasy Naruto said with teary eyes and continued again. I am feeling like something will happen to you, to us. This happiness, it feels like unreal to me like I am in a dream and I will wake up and everything will vanish. Please Anko-chan, can you say again that you won't leave me even if someone tries to separate us tears were now flowing fully. Anko just stared wide eyes. Why was he feeling like that? No I will have to calm him. Anko sat down and placed Naruto on her lap, each other's arms around each other, the she replied immediately. Naruto, I won't leave you even if Kami himself asks me to leave you. You are like a part of me now which I can never let go. Anko said reassuring him. They sat like that for several minutes and then Naruto asked something she will never forget. Hey Anko-chan, will you marry me he said in a low voice almost shyly. Anko heard him clearly and widened her eyes. To marry to Naruto, he is just a kid, why the hell would he ask such a question? So she asked him. Naruto why did you ask such a question she asked a little unsure of herself. I heard it on the TV. They said if you are married, you are bound to each other for lives, Anko chuckled after hearing Naruto. Those idiots, showing these kinds of things on TV she thought. Anko sighed, he is still not satisfied from her previous statement. So Anko said what was needed to say. Naruto marriage is not something so easy. It needs many things and you will not understand them, but if it will calm your worries down of me leaving you then, okay yes, I will marry you. Now happy Anko said a little unease now herself. Marriage is a very important and broad subject to handle. But when she saw Naruto's face splitting smile, all her worries and uneasiness vanished. Yes, she will do anything for him to make him happy. Naruto just hugged her neck and fall asleep now without the worry of his ankle leaving him. They both fall asleep on the couch entangled. So their life was best. They were on the peak of their happiness. They wanted these days to go on like that. After graduation Anko was apprenticed to Orochimaru, a sanin. Anko was beyond happy on the fact that Orochimaru took her as his apprentice. It was an honor for her. 
the honor everyone wanted and was jealous. She trained hard every day under Rajimaru. He taught her many new jutsus and fighting styles. He also gave her a snake summoning contract. Arachimaru knew she was good for his purposes. So he taught her as much as he could till the Chunin exams. Anko was now almost 14 years old just three more months and she will be 14. She had become more beautiful now with larger than C-cup breast. With long and sexy legs, toned and six packs more defined lining stomach. The thing that stayed the same was her hairstyle and clothing. She was now 5'5 with best curvaceous body in Kanoha. Every guy just wanted to better her and she was so disgusted from this that once she almost killed a guy who tried to force himself on her. She was admitted in Chunin exams by Arachimaru after two years of service as Genin. Naruto was now eight years old and 4'2, his head reaching Anko's upper torso. He was about to be admitted to the academy. So both Anko and Naruto was beyond happy. Now the day of Chunin exams results came and Anko along with her friends was chosen as a Chunin. Anko was ecstatic on being a Chunin. She came to Arachimaru who was outside of Hokage office and hugged him tightly. She admired him so much that it came too close to love him. But you can say she loved him. She was smiling broadly showing her white teeth. Sensei, I am a Chunin now. Can you believe it she yelled in happiness. It was being hard to control her happiness. She gave a hug to each one of her friends. She couldn't wait to tell Naruto. She wanted to tell him immediately and as she moved towards the door. Arachimaru stopped her. Anko chan congratulations on promotion to Chunin, but you know we don't have time for cheering it, Arachimaru said, destroying her plans. By sensei Anko asked a little uncomfortable, she had said to Naruto that they will have a great party if she got promotion. She wanted to celebrate it with him. You remember when I said that we will go on a training trip if you got promotion, Arachimaru said in his cheesy voice. And before she could say anything, Arachimaru continued. It's time to go. So I want you to meet me at Kanoha Gates in an hour sharp with your supplies Arachimaru said, and before she could say anything he shunshined. It's been 30 minutes already she started her search for Naruto. But she couldn't find him. She had gone to her apartment to pack the bag of supplies. It took only 10 minutes to pack. And Naruto wasn't at home, so she started to search for him. Where the hell he was? She didn't want to go without telling and see him. No, it was not possible for her to leave without seeing him. It would kill him. The only thing he was much afraid of was her leaving him, and she was going to do that despicable sin now, because she couldn't cancel the trip, because of it's a rare and golden opportunity for her. She was now crying. What would he think about her if she went without seeing him, what would he do? Would he hate her for doing the only thing he didn't wanted her to do? And just thinking about it made her stomach's insides wrenched. No, she will not go without seeing him, but when she realized again that his whereabouts were unknown, again her heart started to ache from the pain which will never go away until she will see him now or when she will return from her trip. Then suddenly she caught sight of Genma, who was a Chunin like her. She thanked the whoever God sent him. She shunshined to him and called him. Boy Genma he stopped and turned towards her. When he saw who it was, his face lit up. Genma was her classmate in academy. He had many times flirted with her and sometime asked her out on a date, but she always refused him and threatened that if he wanted his balls to remain attached to his body, then never ask her out again. Genma always disheartened from her refusal and when he asked her that is there someone else she likes, she just said no or she is not interested in these kind of things so that he wouldn't annoy her more. But he just asked again and again. And once he found himself in hospital room laying on a bed. Later when he inquired about her he came to know one named Naruto and she loved him with all her being. But what kind of love he couldn't find because she acted like father, mother, guardian, friend, even sometimes they behaved like lovers. He just became confused, but one thing was sure, Anko refused his proposals because of Naruto. There were others too, who proposed her, like Aruka, he only proposed her once, and after her outright denial he didn't ask her out. And there was Kakashi, who also asked her out, but she was a little confused if he was serious or just playing, but he got the same fate. Genma came out of his thoughts and asked Anko. Anko, what are you doing here, weren't you going with Arachimaru Sama on a training trip, not like I am complaining you being here. But what is it he asked her normally. Genma, Arachimaru Sama is waiting for me at Noha Gates, and I am going there, but can you do me a favor she said, desperation clear on her face and voice. Yeah, what is it? Anything for you he said hoping to have a little chat with her. Have you seen Naruto? I am searching for him for almost 50 minutes but couldn't find him. Have you seen him anywhere she asked in one breath, not wanting to waste any more seconds. Genma felt a wave of rage bubble up in him when he heard Naruto's name, but he controlled it and said. Whoa whoa, calm down Anko, and I haven't seen Naruto anywhere. Damn it, damn it all Anko yelled desperately and helplessly. Again her eyes started to sting from tears. Genma saw her helpless state and said in a monotone because he was furious inside that that demon could make her act like that. 
Banco calm down, if you have any message for him you can give it to me. I will transfer your words to him he said uninterestedly. The bulb light up in Anko's head. Yeah that would work she thought and said. Okay, if you see Naruto then tell him about the trip and I searched for him but couldn't find him. And tell him to take care of himself and be a good boy. And tell him that I love him and she listed him many things to tell Naruto. Genma just listened to her with close eyes. With her increasing number of things in the list his rage was increasing but he didn't show it on his face. Okay he said stoically. Thank you very much Genma. Your true friend. I will treat you dinner when I return she said and with a short hug went towards Konoha gates. Genma just stood there head downward, eyes closed, fists clenched and veins bulging on his forehead. He punched a nearby cemented wall making a hole in it. Hell with your dinner he shouted in rage. Banko reached to the gates and met Orochimaru. Banko, you are late two minutes and we haven't even leave Konoha yet. If you don't change your irresponsible behavior, it won't be any good for you. And this is my first and last warning. Understood he said with annoyance in his voice. Banko just hanged her head downward and said in a low voice. Hi, sensei, and they made their way in the lush green forest. Naruto had been called by Hokage to his office and he reached there just a minute after Anko left. Hokage has called him for a prank he did to a civilian and he filed a complaint to Hokage. Hokage lectured Naruto about social behavior and not to prank again. Naruto promised that it will not happen again. And after one long hour Hokage dismissed him. He came out from Hokage building and made his directly to his and Anko's shared apartment. Naruto was very much happy that Anko would have become a Chunin and they will go out to dinner. Naruto ran to the apartment and when he entered her idly in the apartment he found it empty. No Anko. Not a trace of Anko in the apartment. Naruto went to the bedroom and took a look. He saw clothes were littering all over the bed. His heart started to sink from thinking of what he didn't want to think. He made a dash out of their home and rushed towards Hokage Tower and entered the office. Did you where did Anko go? Did you send him somewhere he asked him desperately in hope that his earlier thoughts must be wrong. Hiruzen looked at Naruto and said Naruto what are you doing here? You should go home he said, pretending that he didn't listen his question. Where did you send Anko Naruto yelled. He couldn't control himself anymore. Hiruzen sighed and stood up from his seat and moved to Naruto and bend on his knee and stared in his eyes. And said Naruto, Anko has gone for a very important and dangerous mission. She got promoted to Chunin this morning. And it's her first mission as a Chunin he said in hope to make Naruto calm and it worked. How long will it take Naruto ask out of curiosity. Here is inside again. And said I don't know. It can take one month to one year or more. I would suggest you to go home and rest. Naruto just froze when he heard the mission duration. No, how can Anko go for such a long time? She never went before for so long for missions. And she didn't even tell me about it Naruto thought. He was already out of the office. He didn't listen what Hokage said after that. He went straight for the was hungry. He just ate instant ramen. And lay down on the bed thinking about how she can go without telling him. Naruto fall asleep thinking about Anko. Naruto woke up early than his daily waking time. And after daily morning routine went out. He went to all of Anko's friends like Kurenai, Iruka, Kakashi, Yugao. He didn't know Genma so he didn't go to him. Every one of them didn't even acknowledge his presence and shushed him away. Yugao was the only one who talked to him a little. She even assured him that she would be back soon. Naruto felt very much disheartened from all the responses. But he was sure she will be back, but when? Naruto went home and throw himself on the couch. He stared at the ceiling. He didn't like the silence of the empty apartment. He was not feeling warm in this place now. And the most crucial thing was for him that he was not feeling safe anymore. Aichi closed his eyes and tears fall down to his face's sides from the pressure of his eyelids closing. Soon cries could be heard from the apartment in the cold dark of night. A.N. Well my first fanfic. You may find Anko's behavior a little soft and weird. It's because this is before Anko gets curse mark, but she will be in her usual attitude when she will return to village. But she will still be soft with Naruto. Naruto found himself in a closed alley. A mob of villagers facing him. It was the same scene as when he first met Anko. After Anko left he was kicked out of the apartment because he was unable to pay the rent. He kept his belongings as compensation. And said he will return them back when he will pay him. It's been three months for Naruto being kicked out of the apartment and in these three months he has seen the heights of hell he has never felt before. He had been beaten down every day, every inch out of his life. Peoples beat him every day till he stopped moving. He lost a good amount of blood every day from the beatings. His condition was now like a tortured prisoner in hell. His clothes were all tattered and torn and whatever shred left on his body was dirty and bloodied. He was now skinny boy. Bones could be seen clearly. His eyes were a little swollen. It merely took three months for Naruto's life to become much worse than hell. 
The Lord of Hell would shiver from Naruto's condition. It was only thanks to Kaiubi that he was alive. So it was a usual day for Naruto when a mob jazzed him and cornered him. Which leads to the current moment. The mob surrounded him and started to attack him. Naruto just closed his eyes and braced himself. Because he knew what was going to happen. He stopped to resist a long time ago. Because it was futile. He couldn't do anything against this crowd. He saw some ninjas on some times, but they didn't help him at all they just watched the show. After beating him to their heart's content they left his unconscious form lying in his own pool of blood. He just wanted to die already to end this cycle of pain and agony. He couldn't do anything, just cry tears of blood. He was sure that he will die this time. He felt a slight flow of wind caressing his face and blonde locks which was red from the blood. It felt like someone's embrace, the same as when he first met Anko. He wanted to see Anko last time. And he just let himself succumb to darkness in that unknown embrace. Naruto opened his eyes only to see hospital's white ceiling. He slowly turned his head to his left and saw Hokage sitting there. Hiruzen saw Naruto waking up. How are you feeling Naruto he asked. Naruto didn't say anything, just lowered his head and closed his eyes. Hiruzen sighed. He remembered the day when he heard about the incident from Yugao who saw him lying there in his own pool of blood and brought him to the hospital. Hiruzen just hoped that Naruto won't hold a grudge against the villagers. He just hoped that Naruto will forgive them. But he didn't know that the seed for Konoha destruction was already sowed. Naruto, it's been one month, you were unconscious he said hoping to get answer, but he only received silence. After some minutes Naruto spoke who brought me here in the hospital. Yugao Hiruzen said simply. She brought you here and admitted to the hospital he said looking out the window. Hiruzen again received silence. He sighed heavily. I am sorry Minato, Kishina. I failed you he thought to himself. Naruto started to get off the bed and searched for his clothes. Hiruzen knew it's useless to say anything to him at the moment, so he just pointed to where his cloths were. Naruto dressed up and started to leave, but Hiruzen stopped him. Naruto, come with me to Hokage office. I want to talk a little with you. Naruto didn't say anything, just followed behind him. When they reached they talked a little, well Hiruzen talked, and Naruto just nodded or remained silent. After Hiruzen realized it's all useless and he was wasting his time he came to the point. He took out a key and an envelope and handed them over to Naruto. Naruto stared at the items confusedly and said what are these for? This is your apartment key and inside the envelope is your monthly expense. And I have given your name an academy for shinobi studies. And I want you to work hard. You have to attend academy from next week, Hiruzen said in hopes to get a response more than a nod. Naruto grabbed the items and stood up. He thanked the Hokage and after asking the directions for the new apartment he left the Hokage office. Naruto entered his new home or apartment. It was a single large room with large bed, a living room and kitchen and bathroom with necessary items. And surprisingly there was furniture in the apartment so he didn't need to buy anything. Naruto checked the whole apartment. It was livable. It was better than living on streets. He checked the kitchen, there was enough food for a week. Naruto flopped down on the couch and after a little while he fell asleep. One week passed without any grave incident because he didn't left the apartment that whole week. But after a week passed, he would have to leave the apartment for academy, and then everybody will know, and then again they will start to beat him. After one week Naruto started to go to academy, but it was same as in the village. He was unable to make any friends. He got same treatment from his classmates as he got from villagers. So he mostly stayed at home. But the situation didn't improve much. He was now surviving on the trash bins. Because even after having money no one sold him anything. And three more months passed like this. Naruto spent every night crying to sleep and hoping that Anko would return tomorrow. At the moment Naruto was searching for food in the trash bin in a little dark alley in evening. He was so engrossed in his search that he didn't acknowledge someone standing behind him. The person behind him called to him, but after getting no response the person tapped him on his shoulder and tried to get his attention hey she said. Naruto froze when the person touched him, but before he could say or do anything the person inquired, what are you doing out so late in the dark? He realized the person was a girl from the tone of voice. Naruto slowly turned his head towards the person and saw a girl. She was a girl not more than 12 years old. She has waist-length black hair. Black eyes and a slim figure. She was a beautiful girl. Naruto became scared and said in a fearful voice, please don't hit me, don't hit me, I didn't do anything, I was only searching for food. She frowned at his answer. She lowered her body and positioned her body to his eye level. Hey, I am not going to hit you. You didn't do anything wrong she said with a soft voice. But didn't get any response. Then she asked him are you hungry? He lifted his head to see her to confirm what he heard and when it was confirmed he nodded in yes. He was looking directly in her eyes. And when she looked in his eyes, she was stunned for a minute. His eyes were reflecting so much pain, sorrow and agony. 
then it clicked to her when she looked carefully his face. He was the demon boy everyone always talked about. She registered his features, he was very thin, and bones could be seen on his body. Wearing a ragged and dirty orange jumpsuit. And has some blood on his clothes. He looked eight years old and four three foot of height. And has three whisker marks on each cheek. She regained her compasser after some moments. And asked him in a very sweet and soft voice, how long haven't you eat anything? Naruto hearing her eased a little. You haven't eaten for two days. I had some ramen in Achiricus as my last meal, but because that is the only shop from which I don't get thrown out. But they are closed since two days. I don't know why. Other shoppers don't sell me anything. They only sell me something only when I am with Jiji. But it was only once and after that he didn't come again he told her sadly. Jiji she asked confusedly. I mean Hokiji said. And why didn't he come to check on you again she asked. He said he is the leader of the village and it's very hard or mostly impossible for him to spare time for me, he said in a said voice. The girl sighed. The Hokage was right. He is the leader and it would have been very hard, but he could have sent someone else to check on him. She put her grocery bag down and took out a carrot and gave it to him. Here you go little boy she said. He saw the item in her hand and stared in her eyes for any alternate motives. She rolled her eyes towards the carrot for him to take and eat. He took the carrot and checked it for any poison. When he felt it was okay he ate it. When he finished the carrot she said I forgot to ask your name. My name is Kasumi. What is yours she asked him. Naruto Uzumaki, next Hokage he said in a loud and cheerful voice, forgetting his earlier fears. She thought that at least she should give him some food and it won't be much heavy on her pocket and after a minute asked so Naruto, would you like to have dinner with me she asked. As Naruto heard her, he froze again. Giving him to eat something was one thing, but inviting him to her home for dinner. It was first time someone treated him good and asked that to him after Anko left. Naruto felt his eyes sting with tears. He nodded his head fast and hoping that this person would treat him good. Okay then come with me she said, and Naruto followed her. After walking about 15 minutes she came to a clearing at the edge of the village. It was just a small house which was already worn down. They entered in her home. She put the grocery aside and took out some vegetables to cook. While preparing dinner she told Naruto to go and clean himself. After about half an hour they were having the dinner. And it finished soon. It was delicious but not as much as Raymond or Dango but delicious. Thank you, miss for the food. But why are you treating me so good? Going to the length of offering me food. Why he asked curious now. She smiled and said Naruto, every person in this world is not same. Everyone is different in their own way. So you can say I am different from them. Naruto stared at her for several seconds and then blushed in embarrassment too didn't understand what you just said. She chuckled at him and said I mean I don't judge people without knowing them. She saw a look of confusion on his face and sighed and thought of an easy way to explain. Okay it's like this, I don't think about you as other villagers. I don't think you are a demoni mean you don't look like a demon. She said and pretended like checking him for any sign of being demon. When she didn't find anything weird, she smiled. Naruto shrank a little under her gaze, but when saw her smiling he relaxed. She ruffled his hair and said you are a kind and cute little boy. Don't let villagers fool you, okay? They are a bunch of idiots who can't see what you are a little, cute, dainty, adorable, beautiful, charming, delightful, pleasant, prettish continued, and with every word Naruto's facial color became redder than tomato. Asumi seeing the effect of her teasing couldn't hold and broke out in a fit of laughter. After a while both calmed down from laughter and embarrassment. Naruto then said hey miss dot, she cut him off mid-sentence it's not miss. It's Kasumi she said with a smile. Naruto grinned his toothy grin and said Kasumi chan you are a nice lady. Kasumi giggled at his antics oh I am a nice lady, well I know that she said with a smile. So like that their chit chat started and went on for hours. He told her almost everything good that happened with him. He told her how he met with Hokage and how sometimes Hokage offered him ramen. And how he will be a Hokage someday. But the most he talked about was Anko. How he met her and how she helped him. How they used to live together. And how much they loved each other. It wasn't like he doesn't love her now, but he was mad at her very much for leaving him. But when the end of Anko's history came he became sad. And Kasumi understood that it's time to change topic or ask something else. Hey Naruto who is this Anko person you are talking about so much she asked him. Naruto's cheerful expression returned to his face after all he was talking about most precious person. Anko-chan was the most precious person to me. She was a very strong ninja of Konoha. Shikasumi interrupted him. Hey Naruto why are you regarding her like she was in past with you, but not now Kasumi said, while well, she understood a little of the problem. As he heard her his smile vanished from his face and his eyes started to water. After not getting any response she turned her head towards him and when she saw him crying, she stood up and went to him and enveloped him in a comforting embrace. 
Naruto stiffened a little from sudden action because it has been a long time someone embraced him lovingly. She felt him stiffened, but tightened her hold more, and said in a much soft and loving voice, Naruto I am sorry, it's alright if you don't want to talk about her. Naruto relaxed and shook his head no, and went to talk about her. He calmed down and his sobbing stopped after some minutes. She didn't let him go the whole time. Then Naruto continued I want to tell you about her because you are the only person who treated me like this after her. She stayed silent and only listened. He told her everything about Anko. He told her his and Anko's complete daily routine. He told her she was the most precious person to him and how much he loved her. And in the end he told her how she left him alone. Asumi remained quiet the whole time only nodded when needed. She understood their relationship. She understood how much they cared and loved each other. But why would she leave him if she loved him that much? She came out of her thoughts when she heard Naruto said something. Hey Kasumi chan Do you think she started to hate me like villagers? Because I never said or done anything bad to make her hate me. Then why she too started to hate me he voiced his pain to her. After listening the whole story Kasumi felt her eyes sting a little. But after some moments she compassed herself and said Naruto, after all the things you told me about Enko, all things she did for you. I guess she loved you too much to ever hate you even a bit. She wouldn't have hated you even if you have said or done something to make her angry. She reassured him in a soft voice. Then why did she leave me? Hokage told me that she has gone for a very long and dangerous mission. But it has been six months from the time she left me. I think Jiji is not telling me the truth. But I understand if she hates me. But if not then why didn't she tell me anything about her leaving Naruto said desperately. Naruto became silent after his rant and started to think what did he said to Anko, which made her hate him. Then he suddenly asked her hey, Kasumi-chan. How she said in response. As marrying someone is a bad thing he asked her a little shyly. But she said not completely grasping the meaning of what he said. He said again I mean to make girlfriend and then ask her to marry. Is it a bad thing? Naruto why are you asking something like that so suddenly she asked a little confused. Naruto blushed at her question and felt embarrassed. When Kasumi didn't get any response, she pondered a little on this silly question. But suddenly it clicked in her head and her eyes widened in realization. And then she smirked and a mischievous glint appeared in her eyes and teased him oh god, Naruto, I didn't know you were so eager to marry Anko. When Naruto heard her he felt steam came out of his ears. But he compassed a little and said, what what are you talking about he tried to evade. She broke out in laughter and when she calmed herself she said Naruto you actually asked Anko to marry you. So what, I loved her very much and I didn't wanted her to leave me. So I asked her to marry me so that she will always be with me, Naruto's loud voice became a whisper in the end and he continued, but even after saying yes, she left me Naruto felt like crying again. This whole time they were in that hug and now she tightened it more. Asumi then said Naruto, married to someone is not a bad thing. And I think every girl dreams to marry someone and to have a nice and loving family. But I can't say the same about Shinobis. Because I am not a shinobi and I am a civilian. So I don't know how shinobi lives and think. Naruto listening her and said you mean that she is a shinobi, that's why she can't marry me. Then why did she accept? If she is scared then I will become a super strong ninja and I will protect Anko and you and my precious people he said from sad to enthusiastically. She giggled on his antics and said don't worry Naruto, I can say for sure that this wasn't the reason she left you she said. Really Naruto asked her hoping that his marriage was safe. Yeah she assured him. Before he could say anything more she said now it's late and time to sleep. Hearing this, his heart dropped in his chest and his smile vanished. When she looked the expression on his face. She understood the situation and said you can sleep here if you want. I have extra mattress she said and hoped to make him cheerful. Hearing her Naruto felt the happiness he didn't feel for six months. He suddenly hugged her tightly and thanked her again and again. She smiled and ruffled his hair and said you stay here and let me arrange the mattresses. He nodded cheerfully. After 20 or 30 minutes they were ready to sleep. Good night Naruto she said. Naruto felt happiness swell up in him after hearing her. And replied good night Kasumi-chan. And sleep took over both of them. And they both slept peacefully. After that day they both became good friends and you can say she became his precious person. She often offered Naruto food and talked for hours and sometimes they both spend their whole day together in Kasumi's house. And on weekends Naruto and Kasumi played, ate and talked whole day. While he was happy on one side he was sad a little because of villagers torment. But he was happy nonetheless. Because at that time he has his source of happiness in form of Kasumi. Time passed like this. It was already one and half year past. Naruto was now 10 years old and 4 8 of height. His second year of academy was about to finish in 3 months. He was not as healthy as he was when he used to live with Anko. Kasumi provided him food, but she was not rich she was just able to fill her stomach and then she started to share that with Naruto. 
So it was not malnutrition, but it was like Asumi could afford only that much to live. So he was skinny, bones could be seen. One morning he woke in his apartment and after finishing his daily morning routine, he made his way to Kasumi's home. He was merrily going to her house. And when he reached there he saw a crowd of people there. The crowd consists of civilians, ninjas who were trying to keep the crowd under control. Naruto became a little worried why so many ninjas are here, what happened? Is Kasumi chan alright he thought. He ran inside the house in spite of being resisted by ninjas. When he entered the house he saw Hokage talking to some other person, who was holding a cane in his hand, only one eye was visible, his right side of face and body covered in white clothes. When Naruto's eyes met as Naruto felt his tongue was cut off, no sound came from his mouth. That man's look intimidated him to high degrees. Hokage interrupted him and he regained his ability to speak. Naruto asked Hokage Jiji, what happened here, why so many ninjas are here, and where's Kasumi-chan? She said she would make ramen for me in the morning. Hearing this from his grandson figure, Sandame Hokage couldn't speak anything because he knew all about Naruto and Kasumi's relation. After a minute Saratobi regained his compasser and just pointed towards a curtain hanging from the wall in the backyard of the house, which was hiding something from view. Naruto noticed that the curtain was not there yesterday. Naruto slowly moved towards the curtain taking the worst in consideration and hoping and praying to whoever God was there that wouldn't be like what he was thinking. But God is always stomped on his happiness. Naruto slowly grasped the edge of curtain and moved it to the side. What he saw made his eyes widened and his body froze. He felt the pain and sorrow came back full force which was being suppressed by Kasim's care for two years. There, lying on a mattress was Kasumi. A big hole could be seen in her stomach. Two Matic nins, one male and one female, were trying to save her from her inevitable death. When the two nins saw Naruto standing there, they both shook their head to him. And stood up and left one after other. Kasumi turned her head towards him, tears were flowing like river. She motioned her head for him to come near her. Naruto moved towards her. His legs felt numb, like jelly. Every second felt like hours. After a minute which felt like hours he was standing near her. And when he reached near her he fell down to his knees no longer has strength to stand. Everyone was watching the scene unfolding before them from some foots of distance. Naruto took her hand in his and gave it a squeeze. Tears flowing like rivers staining his face. He lifted her hand and grasped it in his and brought it to his chest and broke out in fits of cry. Watching him cry his eyes out Kasumi felt the pain in her heart increase. She didn't want to leave him alone, but it was not in her hands. She wasn't a ninja. What could she do when an unknown ninja broke into her house and stabbed her in the stomach? Naruto she managed to say. I don't have much time, so listen to me carefully she said slowly. He didn't say anything just nodded. Naruto, every person in this world has to go one day. Kami sends souls here and after some time they return to Kami. It is every living being's destiny. It is the fate each person has to face when their time finishes in this world. So it's my time now she chalked on the blood in her mouth and coughed up some blood. And said again Naruto, you are a very kind and strong soul. I know you are alone and there will be many hardships in your life ahead. Many people will try to stop you from becoming a capable ninja. But I want you to promise me that you will never give up. You will never give up on becoming a great cage. I know you will achieve that goal someday she coughed up more blood and continued. Do whatever you do with full determination and zeal and do things in a way that you never regret. I don't regret anything, the time I spent with you was happiest time of my life. I will never forget that even in afterlife. I will never forget you. Naruto, make some good friends. And despite all the bad things try to live a happy life, she coughed up some more blood. And again continued her last words and most important thing in the life, learn to forgive. And her breath became heavy in long strides. But she managed to say and it's not necessary to be a strong and powerful ninja be a great ninja. Become the legend. Naruto couldn't say anything, he just kept listening and kept nodding. He was crying like never before. She coughed some more blood. And said again Naruto, I guess it's time to go. Shinigami is here. I can see him. Naruto just squeezed her hand more tightly and shook his head while crying his eyes out and murmured, no, no, no in his crying fits and sobs, showing his unacceptance to all that was happening. He lifted his head first time from the start and met her eyes. He just started to wail more. She watched him crying, it was so painful for her that no one could describe. She just managed to voice her last words. It's okay to cry sometimes, Nehru. But this she took her last breath. Naruto put his head on her chest and cried and cried and cried. Okajing this came to Naruto's side and put a comforting hand on his shoulder and said, she is gone, Naruto. It's better if we sent her with smiles on our faces. Naruto didn't listen to him or acknowledged his presence. He was just crying from inside out. He kept crying for a while. The pain, anguish and loneliness all came to him like a hit by a mountain. Why? 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 Damn it. 
why everyone leaves me. He separates his body from hers and gazes at her face. She looked calm as sleeping, like she would wake up and ask him if he wanted to eat anything. Naruto then stared at the sky above him. The sky was devoid of anywhere out in the backyard. He was staring at sky like he was looking at someone. And then he snapped. Forgot everything around him and yelled to the sky. Why? Why? You took every one of my precious person away from me. First my mom and dad. You took them away from me and after suffering the torment so long, you send Anko-chan to me. And when I was happy and life was looking good for me, when I started to think that I am loved, you took Anko-chan away from me. Why? What I ever did to you, huh? Do you enjoy watching me suffer so much that when I start to cling to life, you just takes away the anchor from me? Why the hell? Damn it. Now everyone who was witnessing the whole scene watched him with curious gazes like he has gone crazy. Whom was he was talking to her about, was he talking to himself, all of them thought. Okage Danzo, Ambus and all clan heads, some chunins like Aruka, Mizuki and some Jounins like Kakashi, Asuma, Genma, Kurinai, Hayate and Yugao Anbu, were all there watching whole scene. But nobody tried to do anything, nobody even thought to comfort him. Hokage had already tried to comfort him, but he ignored him. Danzo was thinking to use this event as an opportunity to take the Kyubi brat under him. Kakashi was confused what should he do. After all Naruto was his late sensei's son. But only was wasting time and thinking but doing nothing. And all the other just watching the scene like a movie is being played. Then they heard Naruto again saying something. And after you took Anko-chan away from me, you again make me suffer extreme lengths of hell. And then you sent Kasumi-chan, and when again my pain started to subside, you just send that damn ninja and that bastard Shinigami. Why? You don't have time or you don't want to look at the world that how degraded the human have become, which you have created. Akami Naruto finished with calling Kami in low tone. Abruptly, well nobody could see, but when Shinigami was about to go, he heard someone calling him bastard. And Shinigami decided to hear more of the person or boy. He had already sent Kasum's soul to its place. Naruto started again. Kami he yelled to his lungs out to the skies. Kami he yelled again. Why? Why have you just made me your plaything? Huh? No, I am not your plaything. The truth is you can't do anything. You can just make people suffer and watch. You can't do shit about anything he yelled to the heavens. Sometime I wonder why you have even taken the throne of the god dot. You can't do anything for a child then what can you do for all these people, Jack should. You know what, you don't deserve the throne of the god. You are just a useless bastard, nothing else. Everyone who was hearing him just stared at the boy wide eyes, their jaws on the floor. They were so stunned with Naruto's blunt words that a tinge of fear started to crawl their body. They were looking like statues and beads of sweat started to appear on their foreheads. Despite this they were thinking the same, like God has time for a little demon child. But they were all about to be proved wrong because Shinigami couldn't take it any more of insults for him and Kami. Suddenly the temperature dropped to several degrees and a chill of fear and cold crawled up everyone's spine they started to shiver. Everybody started to feel panic on what was going on and what was going to happen. But while it was happening, Naruto was standing there defiantly, denying all the pressure of fear and coldness in the air. The large black and white purplish figure started to appear from nowhere. In seconds the figure fully appeared in front of everyone. Naruto heard Hagak gasp in shock and a little fear Shinigami. Now hearing the Hokage, everyone who were witnessing the scene was feared to their deaths. They thought that, that stupid son of a bitch, demon angered Shinigami, and now we will have to face the wrath of Shinigami. Then Shinigami spoke in a cold voice you lowly human scum, you are blabbering your mouth like a stupid child. Do you not fear me, the Shinigami? It's my first time I have seen someone stupid like you and Dot. Naruto cut him mid-sentence. Shinigami, heh, what, Kami couldn't come, huh? Was he busy in making someone else suffer in pain? But I can tell you this surely that it won't be your last time when you will see new things happening in this world. Before Shinigami was just playing and underestimating him for being a child, but now talking to him so rudely just make him furious. You mortal trash, you dared to talk to me in that rude tone. I can kill you right now. Naruto interrupted again. Kill me. Kill me. Is this the only thing you can do better? Huh. Now hearing the boy again responding to him, Shinigami in so insulting way just made Shinigami snap. And he unsheathed his sword from its sheath and flew towards Naruto. Every person who was watching them gasped in shock their eyes widened. But some of them were happy to be getting freed from demon curse. But as Shinigami's blade was about to touch Naruto's neck, he suddenly stopped. And then someone spoke in a very sweet, calm and graced way. The voice calmed everyone's nerves. Shinigami. Shinigami the death god was appeared slightly surprised. He stepped aside and looked behind himself waiting for the person who interrupted him and about to appear. The light was behind the death god. 
the light started to increase in size and shine so brightly that everybody covered their eyes. Everyone was astonished to their very core. The light died down and morphed in a woman. When the woman appeared fully everyone's eyes widened by looking at the sheer beauty of the woman who like Shinigami appeared from nowhere. She was sitting on a throne. She had blonde hair which was lengthier than her height. She had pale skin wearing a white and golden kimono-like robe. A said female turned her head toward Shinigami and said as same as her earlier tone. Shinigami, how many times have I told you to not loss your cool like that? Then Shinigami retorted, and how many times have I said you to not meddle with my affairs? But, anyway, I couldn't stand being insulted and seeing my fellow god insulted, goddess of life. But before the goddess could say anything Naruto interrupted their conversation. Who are you he asked despite Shigami just revealing her identity. Goddess turned her head towards Naruto from death god. She examined him from head to toe and frowned. He wasn't looking any special. She replied well I am the goddess of life, creation and destruction of everything, and I control everything in this world. Then Naruto said sarcastically oh, look who came to grace us with her presence. Boy, what is your problem? Why are you making a ruckus? Hushi said in a scolding manner. Naruto angered a little and said oh is it me who is making a ruckus, or is it you who has made my life living hell of a ruckus? Boy, the events and incidents which has taken place and are taking place and will take place are all a part of your fate. You have she got interrupted by Naruto. Fate my foot. You are calling all this fate just to give yourself a clean shit. My mom, my dad, Anko-chan and Kasumi-chan were all a part of this so-called fate, which is just a sick game for you. The goddess seemed unfazed from Naruto's outburst. She replied calmly, boy, your parents' death was their fate, this girl's fate was this, she said pointing her finger towards Kasumi's lifeless body, and the girl Anko is still alive. Those who died have limited lifespan, which when they completely lived, I creates the whole situation to bring them back to spirit realm, and by doing this I help Shinigami. All souls are a part of Shinigami which with my help he sends here she said making her point. Fate. Fate. I have listened this bullshit enough. You have just given your games a name fate said Naruto. Still denying the whole series of events. The goddess respond again in her same calm tone, fate is not just a name, it's a result of multiple series of events, which are already predetermined for every living being's life. Fate is inevitable. In the end everyone meets their fate. While the conversation was going on, the crowd of people just gawking at the scene because they were flabbergasted to voice anything. Everyone was awed at Naruto who was facing Shinigami and goddess of creation without any fear, but even if he might have been feeling any nervousness, then he wasn't showing it. Naruto was quiet for a minute. His bangs foreshadowing his eyes. Suddenly he spoke fate, he he, do you know what your fate is the goddess of creation he finished sarcastically. Everyone widened their eyes at him for what he just said. Even Shinigami and goddess became befuddled for a second on the question. Then she chuckled and answered my fate. Boy, you are really showing that you are an utter idiot. I am the controller of everything even fate and you are asking me my fate. Naruto ignored her comment again became silent for some seconds. Then said fate, do you know what my fate is? Ami put a finger under her chin and thought for a second, and then smiled and said well superficially, it looks very clear, but if you go deep, then it's much complicated. What do you mean Naruto asked. He didn't understand the difficult words. Ami looked a bit irked by his slowness then explained. What I mean is, you will need to work hard to achieve something than others because of your situation with the village. You will not be recognized easily if you even reach that point. You current life just a trailer of the future. You Naruto cuts her off mid-sentence. Ami, what happens in the future, well, you need to worry because I am going to change my fate. See again my fate Kami and see very carefully. Because I Naruto Uzumaki, swear on my name, on my parents name, on Kasumi's name, I will change my fate on every turn of my life. And if Shinigami comes for my soul then I will escape from him every time, until I would want. I would make you feel the same hell I have suffered. Remember this. You won't get my soul easily, I promise you that Naruto said defiantly. Hearing him Kami broke out in laughter and said, you will do such things you just said, really, don't make me laugh boy. But you are an amazing child, I can tell that surely. Okay tell me how you have planned to do what you just said. Have you thought of anything before uttering such words or are you just blabbering out? I don't think you have planned anything. Naruto just remained silent. He didn't know how he would do those things. He just blurted out those things. But he will do it at any cost. Naruto then said I don't know how am I going to do this. But I will do this for whatever it takes. I will find out the way. Just you wait he said while well, staring in Kami's eyes and with so much determination that even Kami and Shinigami felt something akin to uneasiness in themselves. The look in his eyes was of strong determination which was screaming that he would do that. And I will make you leave your palace and throne and make you live on earth a simple life, then you will understand what a human life is. 
then I will see what would you do without any power and all that he said with the same determination. Now I, Naruto Uzumaki challenge you that if you have it in yourself then try to take my soul from me whenever my time comes he declared. He made a thought pose for a moment, then said well why we don't make a deal. What kind of deal Kami asked. If I succeed in escaping from Shinigami when my time comes then you will do what I would ask of you, Naruto said presenting his term. And what if you failed Kami asked again. She was now very much interested in the blonde. So much interested that she made the decision to accept the deal because she was sure in herself that the boy won't be able to do that. Then I will happily do whatever you would say and you can do whatever you want with my soul, said Naruto finishing the dealing conditions. Kami pondered a little and said well not bad, I guess. But I would suggest you to think again because if you loss I will cut your soul in three and eat it in my dinner, or maybe I will send it to hell for torture and punishment and ceremony and rituals for the sinners. Why am I hell god, would be glad. So think once more because you are going against a god. Naruto gulped in fear and nervousness from her words. But it was too late to back off. So he said, don't need to think again. I am ready. Kami sighed well, alright then, I goddess of creation of all life, Kami, accepts your deal and its terms. She outstretched her hand and a scroll appeared on her palm. She handed it over to Naruto and said this scroll is the proof of our deal, it's now official. You can't back off now. This scroll has my stamp. She handed him one more scroll and said this is my copy. Put your signature on it. Bite your thumb and press it on the scroll. Naruto did as she said and handed the scroll back to her. Keep your copy safe. If someone else gets it then it would cause problem for both of us. And if you lost or try to back off from the deal then the result would be same, I will take your soul she gave a warning with most intimidating face expression. Naruto gulped in fear again and trembled. This goddess was really scary. The hand deal accepted they both said at the same time. Chapter 3. Meeting with the Demon Lord Kaiubi. A.N. Thanks to all who favored, follow and reviewed. Ami and Shinigami both vanished after that. Naruto then felt like all his strength drained, the rush of all the events caught up to him. He felt complete exhausted and fell face down to the ground unconscious. Everyone who was there were still in the daze. Hiruzen got out of his daze first and opened his mouth to say something, but the words just couldn't come out of his mouth. He then looked towards Naruto and ran to him. He checked Naruto's vitals, and when he made sure that Naruto was just unconsciousness, he heaved a sigh of relief and called the Ambus. Get him to the hospital. I will come later to check on him here and said to the Ambus. Then he sensed someone behind him. He turned and found that the person was Danzo. We need to talk about what happened here. It's a matter of urgency, you know the Danzo said devoid of any emotion. Yeah, I know that Hiruzen said. Then they both went for the meeting and ordered the Ambus to handle the crowd and send them home. They will know whatever decision council would take in the meeting through civilian council. And it's not necessary for civilians to know about shinobi matters. But it was Hiruzen who was a little loose and ignorant to the matters. All the Jounins like Kakashi, Kurinai, Asuma, Genma, Yugao Anbu, Hayate were all still in the state of confusion. They were pondering on what they should do now. Because it was sure that this incident will cause something that never happened before, and it would be a very big incident would be known throughout the whole world, so a feeling of siding with Naruto arose in them, but would he be able to go against God of Death and Creation? And even if they side with Naruto, they were already on bad terms with him. And one more question was that, would it be the doom for the village, or would it take the village to unknown heights of prosperity? All was unknown to them, but it would be good if they try to be on good terms with him a little from now on. But it would be much hard for Genma, Kurinai and Kakashi. Genma for obvious reasons and Kurinai because even after calling herself best friend of Anko, she didn't even look out once for the only person Anko cared about and Kakashi, well Naruto didn't know about him, but he was sure that when Naruto will come to know that Kakashi was his father's student and his father asked him to look out for Naruto, he will be the person Naruto will hate most. He didn't even try to meet him till now. So thinking along these lines they went to their own devices. Unknown place. Kami you underestimated the boy, Shinigami said to Kami. Kami turned towards him and said, what do you mean Shinigami? Do you really think that he will be able to win? You are insulting me if you are thinking that. Shinigami sighed, don't come to me crying for help if he becomes able to do what he said earlier, because I know as well as you know that there is a way to do what he said Shinigami said. Kami sighed, she knew Shinigami was overestimating the boy. There was no way he would be able to reach that level in this life. She was the mighty god, what could come in her way? Oh, come on Shinigami, do you really think that he will be able to reach that level so soon? He will die before reaching that level, if he ever even comes to know about it. Because I don't think there is anyone alive who knows that method God of Creation assured him. I don't know but anything is possible in this world, you know that, don't you Shinigami warned again. 
I know but to do the impossible, do you really think that that boy has it in himself to do the impossible? And if someone succeeds in doing impossible then he would be one in million. And I don't think people like that exist now, Kami said to Shinigami. Well whatever just be careful I wouldn't want my friend to be rot on the earth. You know how much I care about you Shinigami teased Kami. Well did you just insult me covered by the word friend. Nonetheless I am glad you called me your friend. And now when you have called me your friend, then I think that you know what a friend's duty is to other friend Kami smirked. Shinigami felt himself trapped in his own words. Ami remembered that I have to go somewhere to collect the souls, Shinigami said and vanished. Kami just chuckled on Shinigami's antics and vanished too. Hiruzen was sitting with his advisor Shimura Danzo, Himura Mitakado and Kahari Yudatane in the meeting room with all main clan heads. A serious expression was on their faces. You all know why this meeting has scalded Hiruzen said seriously. They chorused in yes, Hokage-sama. As you all know that this is a biggest incident. And in Kanoha's history incident like this never happened before. So I would like to know what you all have to say about this incident, Hiruzen said to every one of the occupants. That brat has challenged the god and it's possible that because of his idiocy, all of us, Kanoha would have to pay said Hiashi, the clan head of Hyuga clan. I agree with Hiashi in this. I don't think that the boy would be able to win against god and that could result in angering the god and angry god isn't good for the village said Inoichi, clan head of Yamanaka clan. But why would god be angry with the village because of one boy, said Akimchi Chauza, clan head of Akimichi clan. I too agree with Akimichi and Hyuga heads. If the boy fails then we don't know what would happen. And because he is from Kanoha, the god might get angry with the village. So it would be good for us if we help him train, so that he would be able to search and find the way to escape from Shinigami. So I would suggest and would like to volunteer to train the boy suggested Danzo, clan head of Shimura clan and head of civilian council. Request denied. And you know why. I am inclined to make him stronger who could serve Kanoha, but not an emotionless weapon, said Hiruzen in a calm voice. What's the difference between yours and mine proposition, only emotions and emotions make a shinobi weak, Danzo replied a little angry on getting his request denied. Whatever you say but Naruto would not be trained under you or by your methods. And it's final. I want him to progress as any other child Hiruzen said. It's the question of village's safety Danzo tried to argue. We have many capable ninjas to defend the village. Naruto is a backup for now until he is a capable shinobi of Kanoha Hiruzen saved his side of argument. Danzo didn't say anything after that, and his grip tightened on the stick in his hand in fury, but his face was neutral from outside, but he was fuming on inside. I am still unable to understand why you are all making your own stories of what would happen if Gaki fails. She said that she would take Naruto's soul. Were you all deaf while she was saying that said Tsu Minyazuka, clan clan head of Inyazuka clan. Fucking geezer she muttered under her breath. We all know what she said. But still it would be better if we keep an eye on him he ashi said, getting a little angrier on being called old. Hiruzen, it's sure that something going to happen, and it would be better for us to not let the situation got out of control. It would be good if we keep tabs on the Jinchuriki said Kohau, advisor of the Hokage. Yeah I keep tabs on the boy, control the situation. What a crap of load, all of you just want to control the boy just for your own uses, you power hungry boss Tsum ranted, but before she could finish Hiashi cut her off mid-sentence. Tsum, mind your language and we aren't power hungry, Hiashi sneered. Oh cut the crap Hiashi, I know very well how your main house treats the members of other branch house members, and let's not go far, I know how you treat your own child Hinata. Why? Just because she is shy, a little weak. But those can be fixed with training, but what did you do, throw her aside for your younger child, just because she is a little better and strong than Hinata. Now tell me if this is not our hungriness, then what is it Tsum ranted in one breath. The Ashi got enraged with every word she was saying. He couldn't stop himself anymore. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. You don't have any right to say anything about my clan and my daughters. And we are this much powerful because of this system we have which is coming along from before a very long time. So shut the fuck up Hiashi yelled to her face, his face red from the anger. Tsum looked unfazed from Hiashi's angry outburst. Then she said again, you know why your clan members are loyal to the clan, just because of that cursed seal you brand your branch house member with Tsum said a little disgustingly. You fucking who he tried to say, but Hiruzen cut him off. The Ashi, don't cross the limits Hiruzen said. The Ashi sat down glaring daggers towards Tsum. Everyone knew how the main house Hyugas treats their branch house members. Most of the people know about this, but it was a clan matter so they didn't interfere with the matter much. Well they were not allowed to interfere, only Hokage could interfere with the clan affairs. But now it looks like Hiruzen was an ignoring old geezer. Hiruzen sighed and addressed his battle strategist Nara. Shikaku, what do you say about the matter? Shikaku stood up from his seat and took a round of it. 
everyone's eyes were on him waiting for the response. Well I have seen the boy and I dare say all of us must be ashamed of us on how we have treated the boy Shikaku stated. Everyone scoffed minus Tsum and Hiruzen. Shikaku continued sometimes I really wonder why he hasn't gone insane. Really, I mean after suffering so much anguish anyone can go insane and crazy. I really envy him sometimes for his stability and not to give in the darkness. He will be a great leader, I have no doubt about it. Everyone minus Tsum and Hiruzen looked a little irked from the statement. Shikaku continued again well as far as I have analyzed the situation I can tell you that I don't think we need to worry about God. Because as Tsum said she will only take Naruto's soul and I don't think she is a maniac or sadist who would do anything to the village for pleasure just because Naruto failed. It's their deal. Village has nothing to do with the deal in second theft, it is the main reason of all this. And you all know what I mean, but I don't think she will harm Kanoha he finished. Hiruzen looked satisfied from Shikaku's reasoning. So he asked him then what do you suggest we do with Naruto? Nothing he said flatly. Then continued I don't think we need to do anything and why do we need to do anything? I suggest that we leave him alone and let him become a shinobi like any other child he finished. Some of them were unsure of it but some liked the idea. And Hiruzen too liked it. Okay then, Naruto will train as any other child and we will leave him alone he announced and waited for any opposition but there was none. Alright if there's nothing else to discuss then you are all dismissed, Hiruzen said finishing the meeting. But before anybody could leave Tsum asked the Hokage. Hokage-sama, is there any improvement in condition of Ichiha Mikoto? Did she get any better? Hokage turned towards her and by seeing the look of hope on her face he sighed and sat down again. And everyone followed him and sat down. I visited Mikoto in the hospital yesterday. Her appointed medics told me that she hasn't shown any improvement Hiruzen said leaning backwards into the seat. How long has it been since the massacre, two years? I hope her son is doing well. Last time Kiba told me that he always sees Sasuke brooding and muttering about revenge or something like that Tsum said to the occupants. Yeah I have also heard Hanada talking to Hanabi that he is the top in the class. And he is the strongest in the whole class be it Tajutsu or Ninjutsu or anything. I think he would be a great ninja of Konoha in the future. And maybe the Hokahiyashi got interrupt his praise of Sasuke by Shikaku. Let's not forget the fact that he is hell-bent on killing Itachi for only the sake of his revenge. And if he wants to kill Itachi then everybody knows how much powerful Sasuke needs to be. Sasuke knows it very well and he needs power, but he doesn't understand that power doesn't come from any pill, he needs to work hard to reach that level. And by my analysis he will do anything to get powerful soon, Shikaku said. Everyone was listening him carefully. Nobody interrupted him. Shikaku waited for any question, but no one said anything. So he continued but as he opened his mouth Kaharu spoke up then how can we make him powerful soon? Surely we can give him apprenticeship under our best Jounin's Kaharu said. And who can that Jounin be Chaoza asked. Akashi Kaharu said. Akashi Yamanaka said unsurely. Well I agree with Kaharu. Kakashi would be the best teacher for Sasuke in every way. He knows many jutsus and he can also help Sasuke with the Sharingan he ashi said a little perking up that someone was supporting him. Chikaku sighed heavily and said, you are not understanding the gravity of situation here, Hiashi. The problem is not providing him an apprenticeship. What will you do if he is not satisfied with him? And I am pretty sure that would be case. Because his mentality is already crossed that line and he will not be satisfied until he doesn't get powerful. He will reject teachers until he is satisfied and if he got cut by Hokage. Chikaku, what is the danger and what can be the solution here is and asked. Shikaku thought for a moment then said Hokage-sama, everyone knows that what revenge can make a person, if it doesn't get directed in right way can go rogue, everyone's eye widened at the thought. Shikaku continued the best solution for this is Ichiha Mikoto Shikaku finished. Don't you know that she is in coma for two years? How can she help him Kaharu grumbled. I don't know, but if we have to keep Sasuke on right track, then his mother is needed to get better as soon as possible, before it's too late Shikaku said. Hokage sighed heavily. He lowered himself in the chair and asked with closed eyes any suggestions. Tsunade Sama Shikaku said immediately. Shikaku, you know that Tsunade Sama isn't in the village, no one knows where she is, and even Jureya is unable to locate her, Hamura said first time. Then told Jureya Sama to put more efforts in it or pray to Kami that Mikoto opens her eyes herself Shikaku said. Everyone became silent. No one said anything. Then Hokage said alright, I will talk to Jureya and let's leave Sasuke alone for the time being and when he graduates, I will put him in a team under Kakashi Hokage said and concluded the meeting. After meeting everybody went for their respective devices. Naruto opened his eyes only to see the white ceiling of the room. Um where am I white ceiling, ah I must be in the hospital he thought. Then he sat up at the hospital bed. He stretched his body to shake off the laziness. What happened? 
I was go he thought and all the events came up to him. Is going to Kasumi's home, Kasumi's death and all the meeting with Shinigami and Kami. And with every thought his eyes started to sting. His only source of happiness has been taken from him again. He was alone now again. His tears started to flow fully. He lay down and put his right arm over his eyes and sobbed. After a while a nurse came to check on him. You're awake she asked. The Ayanaruto croaked. Good, she said. She checked his features and medical papers and said you are good. I am going to inform Hokage-sama, and after that you can go home she said in a professional tone. Naruto didn't respond to her. She went out. Naruto calmed down and sat up and decided to dress himself from hospital gown to his clothes, and surprisingly there was a new same set of jumpsuit he was wearing before. He discarded the new one and wore his old one and sat on the bed. And after a while Hokage entered the room. He adorned a smile on his face. How are you Naruto Hokage asked with a smile. Nurse said I am good to go, Naruto replied without any emotion on his face. Hiruzen felt a little disappointed from the emotionless answer. I see you haven't worn the new set of clothes I brought for you Hiruzen asked. I am good with my old one Naruto said again emotionless. Hiruzen sighed okay you can go, but tomorrow after the academy come to my office, we need to talk about what happened earlier Hiruzen said. Naruto thought for a moment then said we can talk now whatever you want to talk about if you are free that is, because I want to be left alone after that for a while, Naruto said in a cold tone, which said he wanted to get over the talk as soon as possible. Hiruzen was a little surprised with Naruto's cold voice. He felt like Naruto was in some kind of urgency and didn't want it to be bothered. Are you in some kind of urgency Hiruzen asked. Naruto could feel the curiosity in Hiruzen's voice and he understood what he wanted to know. So he decided to tell him what he was going to do. It's not like he knew himself how he would do that. I want to think about what happened earlier. And how I will proceed because I don't know myself how am I going to achieve what I said earlier. So first I need to train my body and then my mind and then I will think about my goal. And well right now I am confused totally that what I am thinking is right or not because well I think you know what my situation with the academy and my classmates is. They are hindrances in my way. They are blocking my progress. And I can't do anything about it. Well I think you know it very well. So right now I don't have any idea what I am going to do. I just want to left alone for a while Naruto said to Hokage. Hiruzen got his answers without asking and he felt a wave of guilt surface when Naruto said he knows his situation with Academy. So I think you got your answers. So can I go now Naruto asked. Yeah I got what I wanted to know and you can go now. Rest well, Hiruzen said dismissing him. Thank you Hokage Sama Naruto said and left Hokage alone in the room. Hiruzen felt sad that Naruto didn't call him Jiji. I really am worried for Naruto, Minato. What would you do if you would have been alive? I just hope his loyalty stay with the village Hiruzen thought and with this thought he too left for his office. Naruto after exiting from the hospital made his way towards his apartment. After some time he realized that someone was following him. And when he turned to look back but he saw nothing. He again started to walk but the creeping feeling didn't go away. After some time he again turned backwards and this time he saw a ninja wearing a different mask standing there. It was first time Naruto saw this type of mask. It gave an eerie feeling to him. He turned and started to run. He turned and saw that the ninja was still following him. It was not hard for Naruto to escape from that ninja, it was not his first time a ninja was chasing him. And he escaped almost every time. Who are you and why are you chasing me Naruto asked while running. Don't worry kid, I will take good care of you. You just need to come with me the ninja said. Naruto broke out in a full sprint after listening him. Due to his whatever little tricks and training he got from watching the others in Academy, he was able to evade the masked ninja. It wasn't any regular ninja, he could tell. He was someone else. He was able to escape him and found himself in front of a fence. A board was sticking to the fence. It read Forest of Death, Training Ground 44. Deep out. Naruto stand there facing it. He was panting so first he calmed himself down. After his breath was normal he started to thought he should enter in it or not. It was obvious that it was dangerous inside. But for Naruto it was dangerous outside too. And it was afternoon so he decided to enter it and thought that when it would dark he will go back to his apartment. Naruto entered the forest of death. And as he went a little deep in the forest, he could hear the voices of much different kind of animals. A chill of fear ran up his spine and he shivered. I need to find a safe place to spend a little time he thought. But as he moved deeper the voices became more fearful. He stopped and took a look around him. He saw nothing, no human, no animals, just voices. He saw a tree with low branches. That might work he thought looking at the tree. A branch protruding from the tree a little low, but it was still high for a kid like Naruto. He didn't know the tree walking, so he tried to simply climb the tree. He circled his arms around it, it was so thick that his arms couldn't even encircle half of it. 
he put one foot on the stem of the tree and put force on attached foot and tried go up, but as he go up he lost the grip of his arms around the tree and fell down on his butt. He tried the same method but didn't progress. Naruto once again fell down, and this time he didn't get up, he lie back down on the dirt ground panting. But the I can't even climb a tree he thought. Naruto sat up one leg stretched forward and one bend to the knee. Right hand was resting on the bended knee. He stared at the tree then an idea came to his mind. He stood up and put a distance between him and tree. Then he ran towards the tree. As he reached to the tree he jumped. He put as much force he could muster in his legs and jumped high to the tree, he reached half distance, when he reached he planted his feet to the tree, and making the tree as a base, he again with full force leapt up towards the branch, and this time he got it. He griped tighter on the branch, and with the help of his legs he climbed up. Phew finally. That wasn't so hard, was it, hehe <laughs> he said to himself. He laid down on his stomach on the branch and closed his eyes and started to think. What should I do now? I am weak, I can't do anything as I am now. And I can't rely on academy anymore, they aren't going to teach me anything. Then what he thought. Enko chan where are you? I am alone again. Please come soon he whimpered longingly. But what if she doesn't come back? The mere thought made his heart beat faster from fear. No if she really loved me or loves me then she will come back to me. Kami said she is alive. That means she is somewhere in this world, out this village. I am mad at you Anko chan really mad. And when you return, you will have to answer me, and I will punish you. So too will wait for you he said to himself with cracking voice. Naruto was mad at her, but right now he needed comfort in any way, in any form. He needed someone or something to cling on after Kasumi's death because it was being hard for him not to break in mind, and these thought put him on ease a little. And it's true everybody needs someone or something to cling to life. No I need to stay strong because now it's not the matter of only ninjas, it's a fight with God Naruto tried to divert his mind to different direction. Okay first I need to collect my thoughts and I should focus on my training. Now what should I do so Shinigami won't be able to catch me. Ham Shinigami takes people's soul when they die or taking the soul makes them die. And Kami prepares the stage for it. That means first Kami prepares the stage with the event which leads the person to their death, then Shinigami comes and take the soul which result in the death of that person Naruto's eyes widened in realization. He stood up and jumped in cheers, but he forgot that he was on a branch. He lost his balance and fell down. He landed on his leg and which resulted in a sprained foot. Ow oh shit. It hurts Naruto groaned in pain. But it was worth it. I got down the fact in once. Naruto moved towards the tree and sat down, his back leaning against the tree. The smile graced his lips on the little achievement. He closed his eyes and in a matter of seconds he dozed off. The soft wind ruffled his blonde hairs. Naruto woke up after a while. He sat up straight rubbing his eyes. He took a look around him and gulped. The sun had already set, but it was still not complete dark. He could see. The voices of the animals were much fiercer now. He stood up and started to move out of the forest. He walked fast to get out of the forest. After 20 minutes the gate came into view. He came out of the forest. He made his way to his apartment carefully so that nobody could saw him and whenever someone looked towards him, either he hide or turned around. It was dark now so it was a little hard to see who it was, so it was a little easy for him to walk in the streets. I should hurry to my apartment. I must reach to the apartment before the street lights turn on he thought. After 10 minutes Naruto entered his apartment and got out of his clothes and entered the bathroom for a shower. The bathroom had enough space. A rectangular bathtub in which two or three person could sit easily, Naruto relaxed in the warm water of the tub. After washing himself he wrapped a towel around his waist and stand before a mirror which was sticking to the opposite wall of the door. He looked to his reflection in the mirror. His hair was a little long now. He was total skinny. His ribsage could be seen clearly. Naruto sighed. He got out of the bathroom and only wore a boxer and flopped down on the bed. It really was a long day which started from Kasumi's death. I will find who murdered you Kasumi, I promise you. And when I will find him or her, I will give him the most horrible death anyone would have ever seen. Now I have to find a way to know when Kami starts her traps for a person to lead him or her to death. That means a better, no best understanding of our surroundings. But how, there are thousands of elements and objects surrounding me. And I think that surrounding is just first level to understand Kami's traps. How many levels are there? And how to know about them and the most important question is where? I can't trust anyone in this village anymore. Only one person Ankabit she isn't here and it's impossible for me to know when she will be back then, where can I find the solution, where can I find the way library? But they won't let me enter the library. And if I enter somehow then what? Library is very large and in which book I will get my answers. Damn it with one solution I got more questions and problems to face Naruto's side as he came out of his thoughts. He turned to the side facing the wall. 
again continued his thoughts and what about academy. I don't want to go there anymore, but there are one or two kids who are a little nice with me. I am not friend with them, but they don't shout or beat me whenever I ask something to them. But still they don't talk to me. Yeah, I don't have any friends in the academy. I am alone again. No one care for me Naruto said to himself, his voice cracking in the end. Tears welled up in his eyes, Naruto closed his eyes tightly shut and tried to stop the trembling and tried to find any warmth from the mattress. Then he heard someone I can help you. His eyes opened wide. He got up from the bed hurriedly and looked around the room frantically. Who is it, come out said Naruto while checking the room. But no sound came again or no one was there. Naruto then walked out of the room to the living room. He checked living room, bathroom and kitchen everywhere. I think my mind is playing games with me. The stress is too much for me, I guess Naruto mumbled to himself. He sighed and again flopped on the bed and closed his eyes. But he didn't sleep. He was waiting for that voice to sound again. But when he didn't listen any voices then he became sure his head was messing with him. Then he faded off to darkness. I can help you Naruto heard again, but he didn't wake up this time. He felt like falling down in the darkness and suddenly he stopped. He looked around him and found himself in a long worn down tunnel. Water was leaking from the pipes all over the tunnel. And the tunnel also has a little water in it, but Naruto noticed that he was standing on the water. Where the hell am I he wondered. He started to move in forward direction and after walking about one minute he was standing in front of a wooden door which was completely worn down. Naruto could feel the ominous presence behind it. Someone very dangerous was behind that door. The red mist was coming out from the narrow space under the door. Naruto felt a chill of fear ran down his spine to his whole body, which resulted in trembling. Whoever was behind the door was calling for him. His heart was pumping in his chest furiously. Whoever was there felt different, weird like unknown feeling he never felt from anyone. It felt demonic. But why would there be a demon and where the hell he was? Is it a dream? No it feels real. He pinched his arm and felt pain. No, it's real. Is there a demon or a monster? But why would be a demon or monster in Kanoha? And the words demon and monster felt familiar. Monster demon monstrous it related to me and all the names people called me. His eyes widened in realization. It's all related to him but how? He won't get answers until he don't go in. So he collected his nerves, took some deep breaths, and with a determined look in his eyes, touched the door, thinking that what can happen more than death, and his goal was already to defeat death. So he touched the wooden door. But as he touched the door it crumbled in ashes, then nothingness and a blast of red vile chakra shot from the opening towards him and engulfed him completely. He shielded himself by crossing his arms in front of him. But Naruto noticed that it didn't harm him in any way. It just felt hot very hot. Naruto then moved forward and as he entered what he saw there left him stunned. It was a massive hall. There was nothing in the hall except a large door of large iron bars. The whole room was filled from killing intent and red chakra vapors. Naruto was afraid now. His heart was racing miles per second speed. He was sweating bullets. He felt weak in the knees and his knees started to buckle and fell down on his knees. The pressure was killing him. He clutched his chest tightly. And bent forward and touched the ground with his head. His breath heavy and tears started to flow down his eyes. And suddenly everything vile and killing intent and pressure just vanished. The vile red chakra cleared. He was able to look clearly now. All the ominous and vile feeling was coming from one side behind the bars. Naruto looked towards the bars but couldn't see anyone behind it. He stood up and moved two or three steps forward and froze, he could see now the two red glowing orbs or was those eyes of someone. Naruto, despite being afraid to his core didn't have any choice, but those red piercing orbs or eyes, was the very example of extreme intimidation he ever felt from anyone. Only two red orbs or eyes were visible to him, no body. Naruto collected all his strength and moved forward. He was now about 15 feet away from the bars. Come near Naruto heard someone say behind the bars. Now his fear was skyrocketed. But he didn't give in. He wanted to see it. He wanted to see whom eyes are these. He wanted to know the one calling him. So he again stepped forward. His heartbeat was increasing in his chest and pounding in his ears with every step he was taking ahead. It was taking his full strength for every step. With every step he was taking towards the bar, a large silhouette was coming in existence. And the figure was becoming clear with every step as his heartbeat was becoming faster. Now Naruto could see clearly what was behind the bars. His eyes wide from astonishment and fear. The words died in his throat. He felt his mouth dry. His body was sweating. He felt like he was about to faint. In front of him, behind the bars, the owner of those red eyes was a dark orange-colored gigantic fox. The eyes were now clear to Naruto. Nine tails were swinging behind the fox. The fox has large sharp canines. A red aura could be seen around the fox. Naruto couldn't stand on his legs anymore. He fell down to his knees. 
He was breathing in long strides, almost on the door of hyperventilation. Naruto closed his eyes. And tried to calm his breath. After several minutes when he calmed down. He lifted his head and opened his eyes slightly. He looked at the fox for several seconds and then asked in a hoarse voice. Woori Ayu Naruto asked stuttering in fear. The fox was silent till, the fox was observing the boy from the time he entered his mindscape. The fox could understand Naruto's fear of him. What a pathetic human. Would he even be able to understand what I want to tell him thought the fox. Fox heard Naruto asking who the fox was. Well well finally you came fox said. What do you mean Naruto asked a little calming down. And who are you Naruto asked again. I am fox demon lord. Human also call me Naruto felt his mouth go dry Kaiubi. The demon lord introduced himself. Naruto froze again now after knowing that the creature in front of him was the Kaiubi. He had heard the name from his assailants. And now it was making all the sense why people called him demon. But wait a minute I am not the demon. He is the demon Naruto thought looking at the Kaiubi. Okay, you are the Kaiubi, but why are you here and but first where are we Naruto asked. The fox eyed this boy was really an idiot he thought. We are in your mind or mindscape. You are sleeping right now. This place is inside your mind Fox said. Now Naruto remembered that he was sleeping and someone called him just before he went to bed. But what is this fox doing here, Naruto thought and asked. Okay, this is my mind Naruto said motioning his hands, but what are you doing here, Naruto asked curiously that what a demon fox was doing in his mind. The fox sighed again and decided to tell him. You are really an embodiment of idiot, you know, but I will tell you because I know that nobody told you. Ui Naruto said and stared at the Kaiubi. Kaiubi took it as his turn to speak. And it's necessary for us to be on good terms. Ten years ago I was sealed in a woman named Kishina Naruto hearing this became more curious and opened his mouth to relieve his curiosity, but Fox cut him off. She was pregnant at that time. So when she gave birth to her child the seal became unstable because she was weak at that time and I wanted to be free, so I was using all my might to get free. And it became easy for me when a masked man came the fox said and looked at Naruto if he was listening, and surprisingly he was listening. Naruto then voiced his confusion. Masked man. Yeah, a masked man, and it just come fox told him. Ichiha Naruto thought and could see clearly the hateful and raged look on the fox's face. Then the fox continued. Um Ichiha like Sasuke, right Naruto asked. Yeah, that bastard Ichiha freed me, but as he freed me he got me under the control of Sharingan and made me destroy Konoha the fox told him in an angry tone. The anger wasn't directed to Naruto, it was directed to that damn Ichiha in an imaginary way. Naruto heard the fox carefully. Now he understood what happened 10 years ago. But it wasn't complete and before he could ask anything the fox continued. When I was busy destroying the village the Yandame Hokage, Minato Namikas came to stop me. He teleported me to out of the village, but this time I was out of the control of that cursed Sharingan, but my mind was fuzzy. I wanted only one thing, and when I got it after almost two centuries I didn't want it to lose the chance, so I fought back. And after a while that woman Kashina came, but there was some other people too, one was your Sandame and other I don't know, he had white hair. I got busy with them and when I again looked at the Yandame and Kashina, that damn woman restrained me with her chakra chains. And now, if I think, she was very weak at that time, she couldn't even talk properly, let alone do anything, but those damn chains there was a child in Yandame's hands. He said to Kashina to seal me in that newborn, but she refused straight, but Yandame said something, and she nodded. I could see clearly that she was hesitating, and her mind became unfocused, and I tried to take the benefit of it, but was unable. I saw Yandame summon the sealing platform and laid the child on the platform Fox told the story and checked again that Naruto was listening or not. Naruto was listening every word of it carefully. He knew this was much much important to know the secrets everyone has been hiding from him for 10 years. So he listened carefully. And when the fox mentioned the newborn, he understood who that boy was and he felt tears welling up in his eyes. From the story it was clear that the woman Kashina didn't want it but reluctantly agreed. Naruto made his heart hard again and listened. I was just gotten freed from Sharingan and my mind was fuzzy and I was desperate to be free and seeing that child just made it sure that they were going to seal me again in that child. So I attacked the child but as my claw was about to kill the child, that damn Yandame and that woman Kashina blocked my hit by taking it to themselves, my claw pierced them both but it was too late for me. The sealing was already done, just finishing remained. So like that I was sealed in that child or you can say in you the fox finished the story. The sob erupted from Naruto. He choked on his own saliva in his mouth. So, I think this story just exposed many secrets for you. And also why am I here? I would have taken over or killed your soul till now, but the seal was powered by Shinigami himself. So it was almost impossible for me to do that. And I stuck here in this damned cramped place in this cage, for who know how many years the fox said again. 
Naruto calmed down thinking that he needed answer and he can mull over it later. So he started to ask his questions. So, all the things that happened to me was because of you Naruto asked bitterly. Yes the fox said plainly. And you were the reason Yandane died Naruto asked again. Yes the fox said again plainly. Naruto stayed silent for a minute, his bangs foreshadowing his eyes and smirked slightly. Well I can understand that it not your fault completely, Naruto said smirking. That was the reason I told that whole damn history point to point when I don't even acknowledge a trash human like you, so that you could understand, because you are an idiot Fox said. And in future I didn't want to waste my time to explain things in between we are you making that smirking face Fox said, but added, you are looking like a horizontal ass crack. Naruto's smirk vanished after listening last remark. Oh I he exclaimed, but after some moments the smirk returned. I am smirking because you want something from me, don't you Naruto said smugly. Well you are not as much idiot as I thought. You are right. I want something but not in free the fox said. Huh, what do you mean Naruto said a little confused. The fox sighed again and said. For me, you were a pathetic human trash. I would have devoured your soul till now if I could. But the seal was powered by Shinigami. And if Shinigami wouldn't have powered it I could have been succeeded, but because of Shinigami I trapped here. Before today I was just thinking to take you over by using your anger as a catalyst. But you found some sources which reduced that chance two to nothing. But today's event just changed my perspective of you Kaiubi told Naruto. A smile graced on Naruto's lips when he heard about his sources of happiness. After listening to Kaiubi Naruto understood why Kaiubi decided to help him. But Naruto decided to listen Kaiubi more. You are still a pathetic trash human, but to challenge not one but two gods is a feat that only one in million could do. Initially I thought that you were an idiot, challenging the god. But a plan came to my mind soon after. And I thought that if I help you with it, then it would benefit not only you but me too as well. I will be able to take my revenge on Kami and Shinigami, and in future I will be able to get freedom. So that's how it is Kaiubi said. After telling him everything Kaiubi waited for the response from Naruto. Naruto after listening everything from Kaiubi understood everything, and now he knew the truth of what happened 10 years ago, the truth of Yandame, the truth of Kaiubi and most importantly the truth about him. But did his parents not oppose this idea of sealing Kaiubi in him? Did his parents really abandon him? Naruto teared up on this thought. And and it all happened because of that masked man. But who the hell he was? Naruto decided to ask Kaiubi. Kaiubi, who was that masked person and did you see my pa parents? Naruto asked with a cracking voice. Kaiubi watched Naruto face staining with tears. He sighed, he didn't know who that masked man was. Well, I don't know who that masked man was. But he was in a chair. And well I didn't know anything about your parents. Who were they? They loved you or not. They abandoned you or not. These are the questions, you, yourself will have to find out Kaiubi told Naruto. Naruto's eyes glinted a little with hope that maybe his parents didn't abandon him. Well I will find out. Naruto clenched his fist and threw it in the air upwards and yelled, I will find out who my parents were, and I will find out who that masked man was, and when I will find him I will give him the hell of his life, Dadabeo. Naruto's face morphed in that of a strong determination like it was when he challenged God. Kaiubi looked at Naruto. Yeah, strong determination, that's what I needed to train him and what I want to train him. Okay let's not overwhelm him, he still needs to come with the terms he just got to know. Brat, get out from here now and remember don't tell anyone anything. Behave normally like you do always Kaiubi said. What? Why? If I won't talk to anyone about it, then how would I know who my parents were? Naruto asked the Kaiubi wondering why did the fox not want him to tell anyone. Your idiot Kaiubi said. Oh I Naruto yelled. What, your idiot? Tell me how many times you have asked Hokage about your parents, but every time he shushed you away. Why? Because he don't want you to know about your parents and did he ever told you why the villagers hate you, no. He always made excuses to not tell you about me. Why? I don't know. You have to find this out too. And you need to be very careful now because Hokage won't leave you alone. He would have already sent Anbu to spy on you, Kaiubi warned Naruto in a stern voice. Naruto when heard the reason why not to talk to anyone, he understood. The Hokage was hiding something from him. He always hid things from him. Yeah Kaiubi is right, I need to be much more careful. I understand Kaiubi, but you said something about help me against the god Nerid asked. Not now, first you need to come with the terms about what I just told you. Then rest and I think it's almost dawn. Go and spend your day as any other day. And one more thing, you can talk to me anytime you want now and vice versa. You only need to think and I would know. I have established a link between our minds Kaiubi said. Naruto nodded and as he turned to leave his eyes widened in realization. How will he go out from here? He turned towards Kaiubi and rubbed the back of his head sheepishly and asked how can I leave from here. 
I will be side in irritation idiot, just close your eyes and imagine you are going out. Ahake Naruto said and closed his eyes said as told. Naruto opened his eyes and as the Kaiubi said he was out on his bed. He looked at the clock. It was 4 in the morning. He lay back down on the bed and started to think about all Kaiubi told him. Chapter 4. Anko's Return. A.N. Thanks again to all the guys who favorite, follow and reviewed. It really makes me happy to read the reviews. Disclaimer. Any character used in this fic is not related to me anyway. They are all owned by Masashi Kishimoto. As Naruto lay down he dozed off. Naruto woke up at half past seven. He looked at the watch inside. He has half an hour to become ready for academy. Man I really don't want to go there he whined inwardly. Naruto got off the bed and went to the bathroom. After 15 minutes he came out of bathroom and got ready for the academy. He wore his another set of orange jumpsuit and throw the dirtied one in the corner of the room. He took some instant ramen as breakfast and went out to the academy. No one taught him in anything in any subject, they didn't want to teach him anything. So Naruto couldn't go roof to roof on the houses. He just walked normally in streets. He could feel the glares and stares on the back of his body. He could hear them curse him with hate. His mood just went downhill, and all the refreshing feeling of a morning just left him. His mood darkened and his bangs foreshadowing his eyes. He wanted to retaliate, he wanted to shout at them back and tell them the truth about Kaiubi and what happened 10 years ago, he wanted Tabi at them and kill them, but he controlled himself. His time will come, definitely come, thinking this Naruto ignored everything the curses, the glares, the bottles and other things. Naruto felt the rage building in him, he clenched his fists so hard that they started bleeding. His eyes started to sting with unshed tears. Naruto knew that if he stayed here any longer, he would snap and with every moment it was getting hard for him to control it. So he did one thing, he started to run toward Academy. Naruto wondered why they were not jazzing him as always. Maybe because of yesterday's event. Naruto reached the Academy and entered his classroom. He took a look at the class and its every occupant. There were three rows of wooden seats and tables in the classroom. There were only few kids he knew in the class. In first row, there was sitting two of his classmates he knew. One was Chaji Akimichi, the heir of Akimichi clan. He was a fatty boy who has spiky brown hair and two swirls on his cheeks. He was wearing a green jacket on a white shirt. A scarf was around his neck. This boy was like a neutral towards Naruto. He never initiated a conversation with Naruto, but whenever Naruto started to talk to him, he answered or nodded his head, but never yelled or hit him. Naruto didn't know if Chaoji considered him a friend or not, but Naruto certainly considered him his friend. Chaoji didn't run away from him that was enough for Naruto to call him his friend. Second boy who was sitting beside Chaoji was Nara Shikamaru. Clan heir of Nara clan. He has black hairs which were combed as a pineapple. He wore a light blue shirt and black pants. Shikamaru's attitude was same as Chaoji with Naruto. Naruto had deduced that Shikamaru was an example of lazy ass. Everything was troublesome for him. So he mostly stayed out of any conversation. But as Chaoji, Naruto could call him a friend. In second row was sitting two boys, one was Kiba Inuzuka, clan heir of Inuzuka clan. Kiba has black hair. And a red triangle mark on each cheek. He wore a dark green t-shirt and brown pants. There was a little white puppy lying on his head. Kiba didn't treat Naruto as Chaoji and Shikamaru. He always belittled Naruto. Kiba always insulted him calling him names and abuses like bastard, when he got angry, and clanless idiot, motherless etc. Naruto always ignored, but when he called him motherless, it always broke the dam of rage in Naruto, and a dogfight would start between them. But all in all Naruto could tell that Kiba was not his friend, but maybe in future if he started to treat him better. Beside Kiba was sitting Shino Aburam, clan heir of Aburam clan. Naruto wasn't sure what his hair color, because of his dressing style, was. He wore black specks. A black t-shirt and a light blue jacket with a hood which covered his whole head. He never talked to Naruto, and when Naruto tried to talk to him he just remained silent. Naruto was confused what to think of it. He should call him his friend or not. So concluded that for time being he would be his friend. On the seat, across to them were sitting Ino Yamanaka, the clan heir of Yamanaka clan. She has neck-length blonde hair. She was wearing a brown t-shirt and black skirt. Ino always treated Naruto bad. Always cursing him and yelling at him. He never thought he will ever be talked to him normally. She was always frowning over Sasuke. Always yelling Sasuke this, Sasuke that, I love you more than Sakura. I think she lost to Sakura today in winning the seat beside Sasuke. Naruto was sure she was not his friend. But maybe she could be in future. He knew she didn't mean any harm to him. The seat ahead of Ino's seat was sitting two people. One was Sasuke Uchiha, the heir of Uchiha clan. His clan was massacred by his elder brother Itachi Uchiha, Naruto heard it from rumors, and once from Sasuke, when he muttered it once by mistake. Naruto always sympathized with Sasuke in this matter. 
but all the sympathy feelings always used to vanish when Sasuke scorned him. Sasuke never considered Naruto worthy to even talk. Naruto didn't really care if Sasuke talked to him or not. The council and the villagers always pamper him and kiss his ass. Council always provided him every facility and liberty they could. But he never appreciated them, but his ego was skyrocketing because of all the respect and appreciation he was getting from the villagers. It made him arrogant and blind to see the reality. He was always brooding and a dark aura around him. He was always surrounded by his fangirls. Every girl was ready to bet him. Every girl felt tremendous happiness just from a glance of Sasuke. And in all of those girls, there were two girls who was the most dying fan of Sasuke, Sakura and Ino. Sakura was much more of a fangirl than Ino, but the competition was always on. Sasuke was almost prodigy in every academy subject minus history. But he was not bad in it because his parents always used to talk about it at his home when everything was alright. He was the strongest of class till now. Maybe he will be able to surpass Sasuke in future. Naruto was sure that Sasuke was not his friend, and he was also sure that he won't be ever, but maybe if Sasuke tried to be good with him then one knows. Besides Sasuke was Sakura Haruno. She wasn't from any clan, maybe Haruno clan, but Naruto never heard of any clan of that name. She has pink hairs and has wide forehead. She also wore pink colored clothes, white t-shirt and dark pink sleeveless jacket with blue skirt. She was the one girl who claimed to be the one who loves Sasuke more than anyone. She was always fighting with others on that matter. And always drove off all the girls around Sasuke, even going to the lengths of fighting all of them. She was an intelligent girl, but her intelligence was only limited to books, no practical intelligence. Naruto didn't know why, but in starting Naruto wanted to be friend with her, maybe he thought that her hair is pink, then she would be good-natured. But as he reached near her and asked her to be his friend, she just outright hit him to the face and yelled so hard it almost made all of other students deaf. After that whenever Naruto tried to make a conversation, she would just hit him and yell obscenities to him. And once she even called him monster and said to go fuck off and if she talked to him, Sasuke would get angry with her. Really, that girl is the dumbest girl he ever saw. He felt stupid to even talk to her. Naruto was sure she will kill him if he ever do or say anything to her beloved Sasuke. Sakura treated him more badly than Ino. She was the insult on all Kinoichi's names. After that Naruto never asked her to be his friend. And he was sure that he would never be that girl's friend. Now she just disgusted him to no end. He didn't even want to look at her. But well he will have to bear it for time being. The last was a blue-haired girl who was sitting alone behind Chaoji and Shikamaru. Her name was Hinata Hayuga, the heiress of Hayuga clan. She has same eyes as his Anko, just a different color. She wore a light blue jacket over a black shirt. And black pants. Naruto was amazed at this girl's shyness and clumsiness. I mean come on how can a human like her even exists? Naruto knew she always stalked him, but why? He didn't know. It could be anything, like she stalked him because she wanted to tell the villagers his location and which resulted beaten by villagers. Naruto felt enraged at this thought. But if she helped villager in beating him then why didn't she ever came forward? Just stood there watching him beaten. Was it like a show for her, Naruto felt his anger rose. But would she cry then, he had seen her crying, but why? Because they were beating him. Nah but maybe. But if she know always that I am being beaten, then why did she not help I mean she could have brought anyone from her clan or any person she knew, and those person didn't want it to come, then she could have always gone to Hokage, he would have surely helped him. But no it was much better for her to see him watch beaten. Naruto looked at her with rage in his eyes, she looked at him and shrinked backwards. Naruto sighed calming himself down. He didn't know what to think of this girl. Really he didn't know if he should call her a friend or not, whenever he tried to talk to her she always fainted. Come on man can a girl like her exist in this ninja world. Boy, Naruto, how long do you plan to stand there, Chaoji asked in a loud voice. Naruto turned to him and smiled, it was first time Chaoji said something first. The Chaoji, sorry, was I standing for long Naruto said. Yeah almost 10 minutes Chaoji said. Chaoji felt good to start the conversation. He was observing Naruto for a long time with Shikamaru. But finally he asked to him. Now he was feeling better. He was talking without hesitation. Why don't you sit? It's time for Aruka sensei to come Chaoji said to Naruto. Ah thanks for asking Naruto said smiling before sitting on the seat in front of them. Then Aruka entered the classroom. Aruka was a Chunin. He never liked Naruto like other people's. But after yesterday's events his thoughts were lingering around Naruto for a bit too much. Aruka stared at Naruto. Was it really his fault, no it was Fox's fault which was sealed in Naruto. Then why did he hate him till now? When he thought about it he concluded that he was idiot for hating Naruto. He will have to apologize to him after class. Naruka yelled to make everyone quiet. He looked at Naruto and said Naruto. Stay after the class, I want to talk to you about something. Naruto nodded in the answer. 
then Aruka said as you all know that your second year is about to finish and you have your second year's exam, so study hard and train hard. If anyone fails here she won't be promoted to third year. Understood Aruka finished. So let's start the class Aruka said. So the class went on and the day passed. It was time to go home. Naruto went to Aruka. Hello Aruka sensei, what did you wanted to talk about Naruto asked hoping to not get scolded again. Aruka ushered Naruto to sit down. After Naruto sat down Aruka said Naruto, two don't know how to say this, but please can you forgive me for my stupidity, Aruka pleaded to Naruto. Naruto raised an eyebrow and said what are you apologizing for? I am apologizing for all my awful acts and words I have said and done to you, Aruka said in shame. Aruka bowed his head in guilt. Naruto stared at Aruka for a minute, then said why sudden change of attitude, Aruka sensei. Because I was an idiot to hate you for someone else's actions. I really am ashamed of myself. Please Naruto forgive me otherwise this weight of guilt on my chest will kill me, Aruka begged still his head down. Sensei raise your head, please. You shouldn't bow to a student Naruto said. Aruka lifted his head upwards. Naruto could see the slight wetness in his eyes. He sighed. Aruka sensei, you know very well that what this village has done to me. And it's hard for me to forgive anyone Aruka's shoulders slumped down, the damage is already done Aruka sensei. But I will remember your apology Naruto said and started to walk to the door. Did you forgive me Aruka asked. Naruto stopped and after several seconds turned only his head backwards and said make it up for what you have done to me, then maybe I will forgive you, and it depends how you behave in future. You can consider yourself forgiven for time being, but don't even think I will trust you Naruto went out after saying that. As Naruto opened his apartment room, for a minute he felt like he entered someone else's apartment. But after a moment he realized it was his. All the walls were filled with graffiti-like monster, demon and other offensive words were scribed on the walls. All the furniture was broken to pieces. The window panes were shattered. Naruto closed the door behind him and leaned his back against it. Naruto tilted his head back to the door and closed his eyes. He could smell the stink of the piss coming from the bedroom. Naruto then entered the bedroom and when he saw the condition of the room, he fell down to his knees. He felt his eyes sting. The bedroom floor was strewn with the trash bins and all kind of trash. The bed was broken in two and the mattress was stinking of piss. The earlier stinging in his eyes turned to tears. Why can't they leave me alone Naruto croaked out. Don't fret over it. It's nothing comparing to what you have gone through your life till now. And don't worry, soon you will be able to show them what happens when you awake a sleeping monster Naruto heard Kaiubi in his mind. Naruto widened his eyes Kaiubi he muttered under his breath. Yeah, one and only. Now get up and clean it all up and rest, I need to talk to you about something Kaiubi said. Huh, what do you want to talk about Naruto asked. First do what I said, then we will talk Kaiubi said irritated. Can't this scum do anything without question? Naruto nodded and started to clean the apartment. It took him two hours to make the apartment tidy up. He fixed a broken bed and couches using the bricks under it. Naruto then took a long shower and then had his instant ramen. It was already half past six. Naruto lay down on the bed and slept instantly. Naruto woke up in his mindscape after six hours and came face to face with Kaiubi. What the hell, you should have brought me here when I was awake or when I will wake up in the morning. So what did you wanted to talk about Naruto asked sleepily. You insolent scum of a human, you have slept enough for this night Kaiubi said loudly. Naruto just raised an eyebrow. Kaiubi felt like killing him. But he thought to not waste time. First thing, have you come to terms with what I told you last time Kaiubi asked. Yeah, Naruto answered. Good, then listen, what I will teach you needs sheer patience. Do you have that kind of resolve because even after spending some time you will feel like you gained nothing from the training, but you will be able to see the results in your daily activities and behavior and the physical training you will do every day. You will become smart and with daily practice, you will be the smartest person not only in this village, but to all worlds. So do you have that kind of patience Kaiubi asked. Yeah and Naruto said some moments later. Okay then, to start your training I need to make some preparations. First I need to prepare myself because I have gotten rusty without any practice for two centuries Kaiubi said. But how would you prepare here? This is a very small place and you are sealed behind these bars, Naruto asked a little confused on the matter. It's not a physical practice, it's mental practice. And it will take at least 20 days, and during these 20 days, you will not talk to me. You will not practice with my chakra. You will not do anything related to me and don't get angry, stay calm because if I got interrupt, then I will have to start over, and we don't have time Kaiubi said. Naruto didn't understand completely, but he understood that he don't have to disturb the fox in any way. Okay said Naruto. Okay then, get lost from here Kaiubi said. As Naruto was about to go Kaiubi stopped him and said one good news for you. Good news are you making fun of me Kaiubi Naruto said. 
Ayubi ignored him and said someone who loves you is going to return soon, Kayubi said. Naruto raised an eyebrow in confusion, heartbeat a little fast and asked and who may that person be? Because I don't think there's anyone left who will love me. What? Did you forgot about Anko, it may be her too Kaiubi said. Don't make guesses upon this matter Kaiubi Naruto said a little offensive. Eh, it's not a guess. You will understand when you will reach at my level. You will be able to feel the nature and changes in it, and basis on these changes, you would be able to tell these kind of things Kaiubi tried to assure him. Naruto sighed okay, when would that person return? Maybe one week he can't tell you exactly because of my rusty skills Kaiubi said. Alright, I will wait whoever is going to come Naruto said, and left the mindscape. Not one week, only two days or maybe today Kaiubi thought. Naruto woke up in real world and looked at the clock. It showed 4 o'clock in the morning. Naruto then fell asleep again. Hiruzen felt annoyed from the continuous knocking at the door. After a minute when it didn't stop Hiruzen opened the door and became alert as he saw his ambus on the door. What is it, you know what time it is Hiruzen said annoyed. Okajama, the search party who went for Orochimaru has returned and Anko is with them one of the ambus told the Hokage. What did they get anything which might help us to get a lead on Orochimaru Hokage asked after coming down. But he only got silence. Hiruzen sighed. Where is Anko Hiruzen then asked. They found her unconscious and when they took a look at her they found a curse mark on her neck. Her condition was critical so she was admitted to the hospital Anbu told him. Hokage and his personal Anbu entered Anko's room. How is she Hokage asked to the medic in charge of Anko. Her condition is stable now, but we need to do something about the curse seal on her neck medic told him. Hokage took a look at the seal and examined it and addressed to the Anbu sent words to Jiraiya and told him that it's a level A emergency, Hiruzen said to Anbu. Hi Hokage-sama Anbu said and left to send the message. Hokage-sama one Anbu said under her breath. Okage sighed I know cat, we need to keep her under watch. I wasn't talking about that cat said. Oh sorry, then what were you talking about Hiruzen asked. I was talking about Naruto cat said. We will talk about it later and I guess we won't need that because as she regains consciousness, she will ask about Naruto and will go to him. So don't worry about it, Hiruzen assured her. Ooh, they all heard the sound which came from Anko. She was getting consciousness. She opened her eyes and sat down. Ugh where am I she looked around her Mokijama she said in confusion and suddenly all came to her. She looked down and started crying from sadness of betrayal, then after a minute it took the form of rage. She seethed in anger that fucking bastard, I will kill him if he ever comes in front of me no, I will find him and kill him. Hiruzen put a hand on her shoulder and said Anko, do you remember what happened? Anko tried to remember what happened, but she could only remember getting the curse seal and being abandoned and the last words of Orochimaru. I don't remember anything. I only remember getting this fucking curse seal and last words of Orochimaru Anko said. And what was his last words Hiruzen asked. The tears in Anko's eyes just started to flow out like a river. S8 Tat you were best subject for my experiment of my curse seal. You were a test subject all the time Anko said and hid her face in her hands and cried. Tat removed her mask and went to Anko's side and wrapped her in a hug. It's alright Anko, you are here now in Kanoha, we are here for you. And that traitor Orochimaru will not live long. He will get what he deserves you Gao comforted Anko. Anko just cried harder. The feeling of betrayal for her whole life and from the person whom she loved just broke her to unknown depths. Suddenly she said something made every occupant wide eyes there's nothing left for me. I can't live with this seal, with feeling like Orochimaru is watching me and like clawing on my body. It would be better if I die Anko said highly depressed. Yu Gao just couldn't believe her ears. Anko was talking about suicide. Anko who was feared in all over Kanoha around the people of her age and adults too. That strong and cheerful Anko Gao couldn't hold herself and slapped Anko. What the hell are you saying? Are you really that Anko who we all used to know? I didn't know you were so weak from inside or were you always so weak you Gao grabbed Anko's shoulders and stared in her eyes and continued with your memories removed, did you also forgot about Naruto she said Naruto's name loudly. Anko's eyes widened hearing Naruto's name. Naruto Anko whispered under her breath. Yeah, that Naruto who love you more than himself, that Naruto for whom you was the only anchor in this ocean, that Naruto who didn't even know why the only person he cared for left him, that Naruto who is still waiting for your return Yugao said yelling. Enko's eyes widened. Now her face morphed in a look of horror because she didn't think about him when she decided to suicide. She felt angry at herself now. Yugao looked at Enko it's working she thought. She then continued well you know what, go and die, and Naruto won't even know that you died, let him think that you too hated him like everyone, you left him because you had she got cut by Anko. No, I don't hate him, I will never hate him Anko shouted. I love him Anko said in a low voice. Suddenly she stood up and moved towards the door. Where are you going Anko Hiruzen asked. I am going to Naruto. 
I have already made him suffer, not anymore Anko said and grabbed the handle of the door, but before she could go Hirazin stopped her. Sorry to say, but you can't leave until Jureya takes a look at your seal and gives you a clean shit Hirazin said, and Anko narrowed her eyes. What do you mean Hokage-sama Anko said with a little edge in her voice. We don't know about the seal, and it's possible that Orochimaru could be spying on us through the seal. And Inoichi also would have to take a look in your mind. So for security reasons I can't give you the permission to leave Hokage said, hoping that Anko would cooperate. Anko's eyes darkened a little, and she chuckled so you don't trust me huh, it's like that now a dark grin appeared on Anko's face, but do you think you can stop me, Anko said with confidence in her voice. Anko, I wish you to cooperate and if you resist I will consider you hostile danger and will get you arrested here as in warned. Anko's grin vanished and she gritted her teeth in anger. She felt a hand on her shoulder, it was Yugao. Yugao smiled towards Anko and said Anko, you know very well that you can't escape from these checkups. And resistance will got you imprisonment when Anko's face showed some signs of betrayal, Yugao continued Naruto have waited two years so one or two days won't harm anyone, and after Inoichi and Jureya-sama done his job, you can go to him without any worry Yugao tried to make Anko calm. DCH Anko chat and sat down on the hospital bed again. Two more days Naruto and we will reunite again Anko thought. If you want we can call Naruto here here's and said smiling. Anko wanted to remove that smile from this bastard's face, but the thought of seeing her Naruto brought a smile to her face, no she will give him a surprise. No, I want to give him a surprise Anko said. As you wish, I will leave Yugao here if you need anything Hirazin said and left the room. Anko sighed and lay back down on the bed. Yugao too sat down on the chair beside the bed. It was morning already. The sun could be seen on the horizon. The chirping of the birds could be heard from the trees outside. But the feeling of restlessness didn't leave Anko, and the seal was also stinging. Anko tried to divert her attention from the burning sensation of seal. She suddenly sat down startling Yugao what the hell don't scare me like that. Yugao could see the curiosity in her eyes, but for what? So how is Naruto, he would have grown up now, how does he look and is he going to academy, has he grown up to a handsome boy, Anko asked curiously and a glint of happiness in her voice. Yugao became speechless, but she regained his compasser and said Anko first tell me why did you not tell Naruto when you left Yugao asked. Anko became confused, what, what do you mean? He was Yugao stopped, she couldn't form the words. He was what Anko asked. He came to me asking about you, and I didn't know you have left, and I think he went to everyone who was related to you in any way, and he told me that nobody told him anything. They didn't even look at him and said they are busy and shushed him away, and when he came to me too Yugao couldn't continue. Yugao tell me Anko said a rage flaring. Yugao compassed herself and continued when he came to me he was so devastated that the look in his eyes just left me befuddled and I couldn't stop my tears. He looked so so desperate, helpless and he looked broken Yugao again stopped for some seconds, then continued again, I didn't know where did you go, so I just told him that you will come back soon and he should wait Yugao finished. Yugao wanted to tell her that Naruto died once but stopped when she looked at Anko's face and it seemed that she was about to go on a rampage. Tell me more Anko said in a whisper, her bangs foreshadowing her eyes, she was barely controlling herself from making Yagao's thoughts true. After your leave his life became worse than hell. I don't know much because I was constantly on Anbu duties, but I heard rumors. But after some time he made friend with a girl Kasumi. Kasumi Anko urged to continue about Kasumi. Yeah, she was a poor girl, she was unable to sate her own hunger, but still she shared her food with Naruto, but he looked a little happy again Yugao stopped again. Anko raised her brows at the abrupt stop. She was murdered two days ago Yugao finished. Anko's eyes widened in shock her poor Naruto, these bastards. He got devastated again and cried hard and then then Yugao stopped speaking. Tears started to flow from Anko's eyes, she couldn't believe it and these people will degrade so much. Then she realized Yugao stopped talking. What happened then Anko asked. I think Naruto himself should tell this Yugao said. Yugao, what happened Anko asked with a stern voice. Yugao sighed I will tell you briefly and don't ask for explanation. Okay Anko agreed. After that Kami and Shinigami came and Naruto challenged them Yugao said. Anko's eyes widened from the news, it was getting harder and harder for her to stop herself from seeing Naruto. Yugao Anko muttered. No explanation Anko Yugao said now being stern herself. Anko stood up and started to stroll in the room back and forth. She wanted to see him so badly that as she was about to run she heard Yugao. Anko, why didn't you try to communicate with him, just once a letter would have been a drop of water in the desert for him Yugao asked. Anko sat back down on the bed and put her left hand on her face. You know Yugao, there are many things are going on behind the curtains here if my letters didn't reach Naruto Anko said. Yugao just froze. What Anko is talking about letters, she asked to Anko. 
What do you mean Anko Yugao asked. She didn't want to believe what Anko was saying. I wrote to him every week Anko said. Yugao stood up abruptly. Anko continued I always wondered why I didn't get any reply but now I know. Naruto never got those letters, but why you are smart enough to guess Anko said. Anko you are not lying, are you Yugao tried to confirm. Do you really think that I would lie in the matters Naruto is involved, and you know what, I also told everything to Genma I wanted to tell Naruto, but I think Genma betrayed me Anko finished. Yugao slumped in the chair, she couldn't believe the people she called her friends, and even Hokage would go to such degrading levels. She felt tears well up in her eyes. Anko looked at Yugao and said don't cry Yugao, this is reality. Anko went to Yugao and bent down to her knees and took Yugao's hands in hers. I am mad at you Yugao that you didn't do anything for Naruto, but whatever little you did for him, I am grateful to you, but I want to make sure one thing Anko said to Yugao. What is it Yugao said in a cracking voice. Are you my friend Anko asked. The eyes. Then don't betray me ever Anko said. I will never betray you Anko Yugao confirmed. Then will you stand by my side when Kanoha falls Anko said staring straight in Yugao's eyes. Oh Kanoha full Yugao stuttered. Yeah, I can see it, the destruction of Kanoha Anko said looking out of the window. But it can change if Hokage and the people of Kanoha wish a toy I'm not sure, but anything is possible, Anko said. But it all depends on the people of Kanoha. There are still some people in Kanoha who are honest and nice person, but only 1% in whole village. Yugao, people will die in Kanoha, even if Kanoha doesn't fall, and when that happens I want you to be by my side, Anko whispered in Yugao's ears. Yugao just couldn't believe what she was hearing, to destroy Kanoha, has Anko gone crazy? Anko, how are you going to destroy Ko Yugao got cut by Anko. Somian is coming Anko stared at Yugao and said Yugao I am trusting in you, don't let me down, and don't even repeat the words I have just told you to even yourself understood, Anko said to Yugao. Yugao only nodded. And after a minute Anoichi stepped in the room with Hokage. He gave a smile to Anko which she returned with a grin. Well, let's get to work Anoichi said. Anko sat down on the bed, feet hanging down. She closed her eyes. Inoichi put his hands on either side of Anko's head and using his clan jutsu, called mind-reading jutsu he entered Anko's mind. After five minutes exploring Anko's mind when Inoichi didn't find anything he stopped, his body sweating from exhaustion. So did you find anything here as and asked. Inoichi just shook his head no, there's nothing which can be relate to Rachimaru. Okage sighed. Anko didn't seem any tired. Now after Jureya takes a look at the seal, you can go here as and said to Anko. Anko nodded. Someone called the great toad sage Jureya Sama Jureya said from the windowsill. Everyone was surprised from his arrival. Jureya, I didn't expect you till tomorrow. How you are so soon here Hirazan said. Ehehe was halfway to Kanoha when I got your message. So I picked up the pace and reached Kanoha early Jureya told them. When did you arrive Hirazan asked. I arrived four hours ago Jureya said. And where were you till no in seconds thoughts don't tell now, tell me later, I know where would you have been Hirazan said. Now you are here then let's get this over with Anko said irritatingly. Why Anko-chan, so eager to get to the main event, Jureya said with a perverted grin. Well I think you don't love your balls, and I am having problems in finding practice targets, Anko warned. Yeah, Jureya, get to work here as and said. Jureya became professional in a second. Okay, what's the deal Jureya asked. Anko has Rachimaru's curse seal here as and said. Jureya's face formed a grim expression. He turned to Anko and looked at her. Anko felt nervous under Jureya's gaze. Show me the seal Jureya said. Anko reluctantly pulled her coat down a little so that only the seal was visible. Jureya looked at the seal. It was three commas in a circular fashion with black color. Jureya noticed that the seal has three layers or a combination of seals. But he was unable to distinguish the constituent seals of the main seal. Did you activate the seal before Jureya asked his face showing full concentration? No, but the Anbus who found me said there were black markings all over my body when they found me Anko told him nervously. First that damn curse seal and now Jurea is staring on her curse seal, and now and then he was taking a look of her body. This damn perverted bastard. If he doesn't finish this soon, I am sure I won't be able to hold back myself from killing him thought Anko. Can you activate it now because it's a complicated seal, and it would be easy to examine it in activation state Jurea asked. Anko thought for a moment and said I don't know how to activate it. Well I think, all seals work when we feed chakra in them Jureya suggested. Anko sighed irritatingly, it was getting harder and harder for her to not pummel that pervert. Okay she said and tried to feed her chakra in the seal. The burning on her neck increased to extreme pain she ever felt. She felt like her body was burning from inside, like melting. The three tomos which were initially black changed in three different colors. One in dark blue, second in dark green and the third one turned to black and white. 
they all started to glow. Arganko cried out in pain. She then tried to stop the seal but couldn't. Who can't stop it? Anko cried. Tears started to flow down her face. She shut her eyes close. Just a bit more Jurea said and started to take notes of all the symptoms and behavior of the seal. Jurea watched the Tomos changing its color. But why three different colors green one is forethought Jurea and started to run his mind inside green cold it be related to a leaf leaf doesn't sound accurate. Left tree first that's it it came to his mind. The green color represents the nature he said to himself but was enough audible for others to hear. He saw Anko's condition. It was getting worse. Four of the Anbu surrounded Jurea and Anko for security measures. The vile and dark feeling was enough for all of them to make sweating. Anko started to claw on her body to soothe the burning with the help of fresh air, but it only increased. Her vision became blurry. She tore her trench coat and threw it aside, fortunately she was wearing a dark blue tank top, but it was soaked in sweat and clung to her body. She fell down to the ground and started writhing in agony. Gurea signaled Anbus to hold her hands and legs to restrain her from moving. But as the Anbus tried to touch her, they all were sent flying in different direction. Ubi Anko growled in pain and anger. Anko please calm down, it's necessary for us as well as for you. You will have to cooperate otherwise we won't be able to know anything about the seal, and it won't do any good for anyone, Hirazin and Jureya said simultaneously. Yugao was watching the whole scene. It was getting hard for her to control herself from crying. Her friend whom she was talking to earlier was now on the ground writhing in pain and agony. And Jiraiya and Hirazin were acting like there's nothing going on. Now she remember what Anko said to her earlier, Anko was right about Kanoha, and now Hirazin and Jureya proved it. She felt disgusted but as she listened Hirazin and Lareya she understood what would happen if she doesn't cooperate. Yugao moved towards Anko and said Anko, calm down, please. Try to control it. You are strong, don't let this seal defeat you, Yugao said in a cracking voice, tears welling up in her eyes. Anko looked at Yugao and saw the look on her face. She could see the genuine tears and worry in her eyes. Anko chuckled painfully and collecting her every ounce of strength she stopped moving but couldn't stop trembling. Gurea immediately got to work, he looked at second comma like Tomo's symbol. It was dark blue. Dark blue memory thought Jureya. When I was with Arachimaru, he always referred memories as blue. I think that's it. Memory sealed to alter the memories. But what are the nature one for thought Jureya solving the second Tomo's mystery? Now the third seal, half black and half white. What a weird seal. It's my first time I have seen something like this as Jureya thought and started to reminisce the times he saw things in black and white mixture. Then he remembered a book he had read a long time ago. It was based on spiritual entities and there was a symbol, two black and white tomos combined together forming a circle. That means this third tomo has something to do spiritually. So it's like that, and Jureya thought concluding. Anko you can stop it now Jureya said, making Anko angrier. You fucking prick, had you got some plucked in your ears when I said I can't control the Anko passed out. After that the marking all shrunk to the three tomos. And her body got normal again. Yugao lifted her and laid her on the hospital bed. So what did you find out here is an ask seriously. There are three seals, combined in one. Memory seal, nature seal and one is related to spritz. Memory seal is obviously for altering the memories. And I think the nature seal is to hold and control the spirit, one Jureya told Hirazin. Hirazin pondered a little that's why Inoichi was unable to find anything. But will he be able to spy on Kanoha through Anko? Jureya is there any chance that Arachimaru can spy on us through Anko's curse seal Hirazin asked. Spy will I don't think so because there is nothing which I found suspicious in that regard. But we still need to do something about it because it will surely affect the mind and body if she uses it constantly. It surely increases the power in body and chakra, but it would have many and serious side effects, Jureya told Hirazin. So what should we do, can't you remove it asked Hirazin. I can't remove it, but I will put a suppression seal on this curse seal, so it won't be active again, and Anko too will need to be careful with it, because it will automatically activate when she will be low on chakra, and she doesn't stop using chakra. And it will also activate if she gets extremely angry Jureya told him. Hirazin wasn't satisfied with the solution, but it will do for time being. Put the suppression seal on as soon as possible. I don't want any kind of threat to Kanoha Hirazin said. Do you need anything from me here as an asked. No I don't need anything from you. I only need a little space Jureya said. Okay whatever and you can do it here or here as an asked. No I can do it here, no problem, it's not that much complicated process and I know a best suppression seal he said and signaled Anbus to make space in the hospital room. Anbus moved all table and chairs to the side and also moved the bed to the side. Jureya draw a circular seal in the center of the room and moved towards Anko. Anko was lying on her back. Jureya looked at unconscious Anko, and his cheeks became pink, and a perverted grin came to his face. 
Yu Gao saw it clearly and moved forward. Tell me what is needed to do, I can help you Yu Gao asked with a glare. Iraya then looked at Yu Gao, his chance of feeling Anko under his hands was slipping. He laughed sheepishly and said Willy I don't need to do anything, I can do that myself. Yu Gao narrowed her eyes and her glare intensified. Anko is my friend and I would be happy to help her in any way no, I insist to help her. So tell me what I have to do Yu Gao said in an edgy tone with a glare. Iraya winced inwardly, well I think I would have to be happy only from the lovely side of Anko-chan's lovely body Jiraiya thought. Okay, lift her and lay her on that seal I have drawn Jiraiya said. Yu Gao did as Jiraiya said. Now what Yu Gao asked not giving Jiraiya any chance. First remove her top Jiraiya said. Yu Gao reluctantly agreed because she knew that it was in the way. So she removed Anko's top leaving her in bra and exposing her creamy pale flesh. Jiraiya's face contorted lecherously. Jiraiya Sama, focus on your work and don't forget that I am going to tell everything to Anko Yugao said irritatingly and disgustingly. Jiraiya cringed inwardly and nodded reluctantly. Hiruzen just sighed and shook his head. Turn her over on her stomach so the seal could be seen clearly Jiraiya said to Yugao, feeling sad that his time to appease his eyes from Anko's body got cut short. Yugao did as he said. Jiraiya then moved towards Anko's head and made some hand signs and put his palm over the seal on Anko's neck and then his hand started to glow. The markings from Jiraiya's seal on the ground moved on to Anko's body. Jiraiya removed his hand from the curse seal. Then he made an appropriate hand sign again, and the markings from Jiraiya's seal started to gather around the curse seal and formed a circle around three tomos. And after that the circle became invisible. It's finished Jiraiya said. Yugao laid Anko back on her back and started to put her top on again. She noticed that the pervert was still there standing, watching her with a perverted grin. Is there anything else to do Yugao said to Jiraiya. No Jiraiya said laughing idiotically. Then why are you still here? Leave her alone now Yugao said glaring at him. He may be a Sanin, but nobody allowed him to do perversion acts. Here is an examined Anko and said Yugao, when she wakes up, tell her that she can go, but you will keep an eye on her from shadows here is said, and turned to Jiraiya. Jiraiya come with me. I want to talk to you about something here is in said to Jiraiya. Jiraiya and here is in left the room after that. Yugao lifted Anko and lay her back on the bed and put a sheet on her and let her sleep. She sighed, she felt exhausted. But today's events give Yuga some points to think. She rubbed her hand to her face and made herself comfortable in the chair. She looked out the window, it was dark outside. Well much time passed, a whole day I guess. Well at least Naruto will be happy now and after all this Anko also needs Naruto. I am really happy for both of you Anko her thoughts got interrupted by a nurse who was holding a plate within it. The food for the patient then nurse said. She seemed new to Yugao. Give it to me Yugao said. Okay nurse said and gave the plate to Yugao and left. It was not much in quality food but it would do for now. Yugao ate the food. As Yugao finished the food she heard someone knock the door and sensing the chakra signature made her smile. What if neglected Naruto removes Anko's curse seal and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.